It's OSD time. It is Wednesday, the best damn day of the week. It is episode 280. D Wells, along with the Soul Doctor, the Sorties are in the house as we do each and every, each and every Wednesday. Thank you, too. This is episode 280, aka the proposition. The proposition. The proposition. Yes, we got the Soul Doctors in here. Man, thank you for tuning in as you do each and every week. We got another great show in store for you. If you missed episode 279, where we were joined by our guests Tiffany and Angela as they kicked off their launch in Los Angeles with the sneaker box, go back to the website osdlive.com. Click the tab that says OSD Talk Show. And yes, you can go and pick it up right then and there. You're not going to want to miss that episode because it's another great one. For all of the sorties out there, it's so time. It is Wednesday, the best damn day of the week. So it we got echoes. Eighty D Wells along with the soul doctor. The sorties are in the house of each and every. Somebody turn your YouTube off. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, was me. My it's, bad. It's all good. It is. OSD. Yes, sir. It is. It is. It is. So let's go straight. A the great. The one, the only. Chia. What's the good word? How you doing? I'm good. I'm just prepping for my 27th birthday, which is on Monday. Ooh. Ooh. Nice, nice, nice. Damn, you getting old. Yeah, I know. Over the hill. Wow. Two seven. Yep. Two two seven. So how are you going to celebrate? What are you going to do? Well, I took a week off from work. Uh-huh. So I'm just relaxing. My girl's coming down from Philly on Saturday, so I'm going to chill mm. with her get my drink on. Where are you? Okay. Okay. Where am I? Yeah. I'm in Brooklyn. Brooklyn! Brooklyn! Yeah, man. So, you going to celebrate? You gonna Percolate. Do it all that stuff. Oh, all that man. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I know it's gonna be on the top of it. Just what is make that sure word you use? You're gonna um something sexy like you say it all the time. I forgot. Oh, you mean sexual? No, something else you say. I can't remember what it was. I say so many things. So <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Sex on a stick or something she said once or something. Oh man, okay. Hey. She said. It's all good. It's all good. Well, J to the L to the R. What's up, man? We're going from Brooklyn to the PDX. What's up, sir? What's happening, everybody? We're what good. We're good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 280, a.k.a. The Proposition. We're getting this nice uh, Indian summer, spring weather, whatever you want to call it, but it's still nice out here. It's like it's 7 p.m., and it's still 60 degrees outside. Wow, it's, it's, actually, warm. it's actually warmer there than it is in Massachusetts. How yeah, crazy is that? Night. It's, it's, we got, it feels like Massachusetts spring out here right now, to be honest with you, with the foliage and everything. Mm. It's crazy. It's crazy weather pattern, but it's all good. Man, oh man. So what? Um, so sit tight. Let's get the rest of the crew in the building, the dis- do- doctors and disorderlies. Mr. Ben Berry is in the building. What's up, sir? You are muted right now, so you got to make yeah, sure you click. There you go. <laughs> But yeah, not really much going on. I can't really complain. Okay. Really it's a good day. Nice, nice, nice. So, and any new upcoming articles about to hit the net real soon, or events that you're about to attend? Um, I wish, I wish I was a little more busy than I am. Um, uh, yeah, can't really complain. Okay. Working on a lot of stuff, though. There you go. Nice, 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 nice. And Mr. Paper Chaser himself, the Soul Doctor's in the building. What's up, sir? Indeed, indeed. I am here in the house for episode number 280. Man. The Proposition. The Proposition. Shoot. People, it's, it's, been, it's been a little crazy, man. We got stocks going crazy, companies trying to really tell stories and get better at that. I mean... What are you yeah. seeing these days, man? They need to be cutting the check is what they need to be doing. I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing as I see every day, um, on our OSD stock report, I am seeing that we have some up and mm-hmm. some down and a whole lot of nothing in between with the speculation of what's going on with the uh, Who's going where in the NBA season going on? 
And um, first of all, shout out to everyone. I forgot to shout everybody out. What's up, Jesse? What's up, A? What's up, A? Yes, um, yes. Uh, as painful as it is for me to salute you and your Boston Red Sox, I'm going to do so. Because, yeah, I know what you're doing. I see what you're doing over there. Just go ahead and put it down. Just go ahead and put it down. Just, just, yeah, we, we, we see the chest regions getting all bigger because you're going back to the gym and all that. Just, just sit it on down. Simmer down now. Simmer down now. 5-1, 5-1. 5-0, 5 something like that right now. That's the score right now. Yeah, yeah I see what's popping. TV's on behind me. You suck. <laughs> anyway, so I mean, there's a lot of speculation in you know what's coming up for the holidays and um, you know with the NBA season fast, fastly approaching, who's going to be wearing what, what brands they're with now, what the shoes are going to look look like, and all this other stuff that's going on. And you know, I think this year more so than in past years. There's a lot of fast forward to the NBA trade deadline in February, fast approaching. So mm. that will indeed affect, um, you know, a little bit of what we see on court from some companies too. I'm sure. Um, but in between time, in the meantime, we're going to get to the daily stock report because, as you know, every day 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, we publish a list of stocks that we watch. And that hopefully you watch too through us or through your own means. And um, we're going to get to how they did at the end of today's trading. So we're going to start with Nike, who finished down today. They finished at 75.56, down 40 cents. Um, I remember last week we reported, you know, on Wednesday, Nike was, you know, really up something terrible last week. Um, but down 40 cents today, and this is just today, um, not an overall reflection. So they finished at 75.56 per share today, down 40 cents. Skechers, they finished at $29.17 a share, down 21 cents. Um, Vanity Fair Corporation, we're skipping collective brands on this report. We should have been got rid of them. But Man, exactly. I'm still trying to figure out who the new holding company is for them so that we can start watching them again. Right. Do you think they t they went private? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, we have to do some research and see. Hmm. Um, see where they went. You know, that's one of the things that's been on the to-do list, but sort of on the bottom of the to-do list. But, um... I'm taking notes. Cool. I got that. What's that, Jess? But I'm taking notes. I'll get into that. Thank you, sir. Um, Vanity Fair Corporation, VF Corp. They finished today at two twelve forty four, up a buck. Um, Under Armour finished at a strong eighty three dollars and ninety eight cents a share, up seventy five cents. Decker's parent company for Uggs down today fifty seven to eighty fifty seven eighty four per share, down a buck seventy. And Foot Locker, Foot Locker Inc. was up sixteen cents a share today. They finished at thirty three ninety five. Mm. Interesting one right there, heading into the holidays. Um, Adidas AG on the OTC market finished at $58.52 a share, down 30 cents. Puma AG, Euro market, finished at 220.45, down 2 euros solid, down 2 whole euros on the day, finished at 220.45. And eBay finished at 51.73 per share, down 10 cents. So once again, every day, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or later, you can catch us posting a list of these stocks um, for you guys to watch and get the results every day. And once again, we encourage you guys, strongly encourage you guys to find a way somehow, some way with your Christmas bonus, Christmas presents, matured savings bonds, whatever it is, find your way to invest in the athletic footwear industry besides just buying kicks. So until tomorrow, where well, you'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all the other social media outlets, these results are there every day. So please watch them. Please be encouraged to invest. So what are we thinking there, guys? Pull them back up. 
I want to see. I want to continue to look at Under Armour and see what they do or what their stock does as the season, NBA season, that is, progresses. Under Armour's yearly trend so far is yeah. going nothing but up. But up, exactly. So I want to know: Do they even have a ceiling at this point? I don't. I mean, they of course they do, but I think with the, the people they've added in terms of athletes and the new line. I mean, I just saw. The new um, spine, a sneaker, running sneaker today, and I was like, they finally have gotten their running sneaker on up to par, and their basketball stuff, I've been told, is supposedly really comfortable and good. So. Oh yeah, you'll find you out know. personally very shortly. Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> I, it's good to see. You know, it's good to see. I want to know if the if the stock is going to continue to go up. That's the big. Yep. Yeah, you got to remember though they have what is it 05 percent of the NBA, and that's that's raised. So right, so that they, is true. If it ends up on the feet of the players, I mean, if it ends up on the feet of people in the street as opposed to the people in the NBA, that's the good thing for them. Mm. So if they're compelled somehow by after seeing whoever wears them to go buy them, that's what really is going to matter. I mean. Let's not yeah. forget about their complete business, not just their shoes. So we're going into that cold season, and that's kind of where they made their name. So yeah. you're going to see a spike in their apparel, which may carry them through the holidays, you know? Absolutely. That's a definite. And does anybody that. see anything about that new zipper that they're coming out with? Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second, sir. Yeah. Absolutely, that's coming up. So. Chicka, chicka. I guess we might as well get right into it. Yeah, Chicka, might as well. Perfect transition. Perfect segue. Good transition. <laughs> Perfect, Jesse. Thank yes, you very you much. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and get into that right now. Nah, Jesse, I didn't see it. Tell me about it. So Under Armour. I'll let Sean do it first. All right. Created the world's first one-handed magnetic zipper. Um... Oh, wow. I'm going to try and play this video. Let's see if we can make this work, D-Wells. You got Doc Martens up there now. Yeah, if not, here you go. I can. I got it fired. Let's, let's see if we can make it happen. Okay, let me fix that. Here we go. He's got it up, Sean. Yeah, I'm going to fix it right now. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. It looks like a trailer. Like a movie trailer. How many entrepreneurs are sitting out there with a great idea, tinkering in their garage right now, waiting to get this concept out there? I want to set a tone in the company that people know, my God, he's going to give us a hard time about the stinking zippers again. And the answer is, you're darn right I am. Because somebody should be thinking about it. Not only the zipper, the position, where it sits, where it looks, the sound that it makes when it goes up and down. So it's interesting. Very, very uh, motion picture esque. Yeah. Well, that's that's what's you know that's become the norm. But, I mean, check that. I mean, just to see. Oh, there's the zipper. How the zipper comes together is really interesting because it is supposedly a one-handed zipper that makes it very easy for folks to, to put on and off, you know, the clothing, particularly in this instance, we're talking outerwear. Right? So, are we, I mean, can this be, you know, be transformed into other stuff? Are we going to see, at some point, are we going to see other, you know, other gear, other clothing made with this mag, you know, this mag zip, as they're calling it? I mean, I hope so. I don't like zippers. 
<laughs> don't like zippers? Okay. No, I'm not a fan. It's not a. It's not the most innovative technology out there. I'm a, I'm a Velcro man myself. But, uh, you, you said you're what? Shut man? up, man. Velcro. Velcro. You said you're, you're what kind of man? I'm a Velcro man myself. So oh zipper, my god. You know, what are you like, eight? <laughs> a white beast. You wanna see this baby face? Wait till I cut this. Yeah, Velcro just this. Man. Just this. Velcro man, seriously? Velcro man, Velcro. Stop. So I watched. I watched this at work today when you sent it out, amongst some other people amongst work. And the thing that came out of the conversation was, now you're claiming that you can now zipper your. The zipper is a one-handed zipper. You clip it one hand. You don't have to worry about straightening the zipper so it comes all the way up. You don't have to worry about if it will catch anywhere. You just click it, and then you can let the other hand hang out here and zip with this one. It's just it's, it's just not possible. It just doesn't work that way. People aren't built that way. And so this leads to the bigger picture with Under Armour. I feel like they have great ideas, and I think I like the stuff that their CEO is saying, but sometimes I feel like they don't put in enough time to really focus their marketing in and when they talk about what they're putting out. That little video snippet should have just been the zipper. Nothing else. You know what I mean? So it's like, huh? all right, we'll see. So Not you don't think the magazine is going to work? No. I think it's going to be a gimmick that people are going to catch on. And you know what? It's a gimmick that will work because I single-handedly have had problems with my zipper for the last few weeks when I've gone out running. It is an issue, but they haven't solved the issue. They gimmicked it. They put a magnet on the bottom so it's easier to get in there. That's good. Is that magnet going to corrode? Is it going to rust out? What happens when it gets wet? There's, there's other pieces of it that are more important to people that they're not giving the full experience of why it could be good. They're just kind of tapping onto it. It's like well, an early release. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because I feel like maybe the video was a preface to what conditions you can use the zipper under. I think that's what they were trying to show you in all of that, you know, movie trailer hyperbolics that they just put on yeah. before we got to the meat and potatoes. I think that's actually what they were trying to show you was these are the extreme conditions under which you can do this. Clip. Well, it works. And if you notice, when they actually showed the zipper, it was all outdoor snowboarding stuff. When you have on gloves, that makes it hard to zip. Stuff right. when it's cold, mm -hmm. so the zipper can freeze. So they're all things that are important when you're out in the elements of making zippering easier. So yes, they did hit that on the nail, but I don't think they did enough. I do think there's a degree a degree of gimmick to it, but I also think, and from what I've read, I've heard that this is also inspired by. Um, Amputees, and it's also just to hop in. It's not Under Armour. They bought it. Yeah, they bought the technology. So, so, so someone's done some research. It's not. It's not so. It's not gimmicky to proportions that someone didn't think about it. And the only reason I say that is because I was in, uh, I was in Stanley Hainsworth's Tether offices up in Seattle when they were working on the new bottle. For Gatorade, uh, I've seen some of the stuff that Frogs has done, or Frog has done for Sony and Nike. A lot of times, once a company like a Nike or an Under Armour signs on to take a piece of technology, they're purchasing it at the stand on the shoulders of giants level already. They're not doing the R and D on it. You're right, <coughs> but they're they're purchasing what's already been at least feasibly R and D. Like, believe me, everything Jesse's saying is true, but Under Armour has, has they're purchasing that, that almost indemnified risk at that level at that point. Is, okay, is it gimmicky? Yes, it's a little bit gimmicky. Will it work good enough to take to market? Yes, or they wouldn't have made the announcement. Like, I, I, as much as we know that they get over on us as much as we know shoe companies and their marketing and the sex appeal of a Jordan or a Nike or all those things these people are making money and they're making some very good and right decisions and they're, they're purchasing their way into some of this technology at a level of risk that they can assume it's a good move don't get me wrong we all it's a good move if you're if you're on the field 
and you see an opponent coming, you see somebody fighting every week, you see somebody punching somebody in the teeth, you're going to pay attention to them. And that's what Under Armour is doing in the market. They're punching people in the teeth. So they, it's a good move. I've got nothing against the move, but it could have been done better. It could have been Don't a knockout it. blow as opposed to just another strike. But I feel I'm like they got a lot of strikes. And I'm like, okay, are you ever going to deliver the knockout blow? I think, and it's going to take some time. They might not. I don't know. But I think it's a I good disagree. move. I'm not down in them. I disagree for one reason. I disagree for one reason because most of us are old enough to remember when the plastic zipper came into play. And everybody said the same thing. It won't hold like metal. It won't do it. I remember this. I remember when plastic zippers became the go-to for most sports things, mainly because of the things that you were saying, Jesse. The rust factor, the cold factor, all of those things. I remember mom. I remember my mom telling me, "I would. You need a jacket with a metal zipper. That one's gonna fail on you. That one's gonna right. break on you because it's plastic." But it didn't. Those things worked. So let's I, not I, say I, we reinvented the zipper. That's not. It should have just been we made the zipper better. Not That's a one-handed zipper, though, not a not a not a mag zipper. Just say we improved the zipper. Just I think period. you're holding them. I I think you're holding them to a hyperbolic standard that all car companies say every single time that they we reinvented the car. I mean, you know, you know what I mean. People say they reinvent stuff all the time. So, yeah, you're right. He was using hyperbole there. He was going far and wide with it by saying such a thing. But the truth of the matter is is we're the, we're the best soft drink in America. Says who by whose voting standards. Okay, hyperbole. I get it, but does it work? Yes. So, you know, uh, a totally reimagined Volvo. That's one that I've seen recently when their commercials come out. Totally reimagined. Yeah. I actually had a designer tell me. A designer. As a matter of fact... A designer, it was our own Dwayne Edwards. <laughs> they didn't reinvent anything. Does it still roll on wheels? Does it still have doors, windows, locks? Okay, so then you didn't reinvent anything. But that's the hyperbole that the world uses in the marketing lexicon of we're the best of, we're, we're, we reinvented this, we did this better than anyone else. Fine. It's still going to have to be up to the consumer to decide that then because hyperbole is part of marketing now. I'm glad you said that. Stop right there. Do we think Under Armour's faithful who already kind of rely on their gear and it doesn't fail them will grab to this? That's all they really need. Um, I think Jesse had a really good analogy of it's, the punch, it's that punch in the mouth. Is that you, he? They socked the bully in the mouth. Now we're paying attention. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming into the winter season, which is their season. Which I said, which what I said early. Their heat gear, their under under layer stuff is where they made their name, and they're gonna look to capitalize on it. Sweatshirts, jackets. Um, not many athletic apparel companies are doing well with these snowboarding outerwear stuff. If you're not in that arena, if you're not a snowboarder or Burton company, right. nobody's really doing all that well making that stuff. So they're right. saying, if these are the things that these people need, something easy to zipper, something metal, something that won't be hard when you're out there in the snow, they're, they're coming for that market to, be, to make a splash for the winter and what's coming up. So it's a good, really good position. You know, it's well, going to do I well. Like I like the innovation of it from the standpoint of, yes, is it as innovative as they're billing it to be? No, but then what is? Not even not, my beloved iPhone was that innovative when it first came out because it wasn't the first touchscreen. You know, that was the main thing is touchscreen and this and that. Um, what I like is I can't wait to try it. <laughs> I want to test it out. Click, see if it works. Oh, Me too. Ooh, okay. I want to see it because... Again, I think it does move the needle forward, and if it was it's not a big deal, then someone would have done it already. They're the first to bring it to market. So it's I, a good move. Again, they moved it forward, but I just I don't know. I feel like I wish it was more polished or something. I don't know. It was good. I didn't like the delivery. I think, but I think the video really did it more for pushing it through the stratosphere, and then the conversation just brought it back down. <laughs> I think that's what right, just kind right. of annoyed with. Right. Yeah, because I, it really I, did go there in terms of like, you know, you're going to see this in a world 
where. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I fully agree with that. Like, he did <laughs> way too much talking over it. Had he just yeah. clicked it and zi- If he walked out on stage one-handed, clicked that zipper, zipped it up, and then peaced out, oh, my God. That's hey, what I'm you- talking about. Exactly. He well, well, like, the last 30 seconds of that video. And we would have been like, oh, I think word. this would have been maybe a little exploitative or exploitive, but if he would have had one of the test study people, you know, an amputee, a veteran or somebody who this was tested for come out and actually do it, then it would have been more of a punch in the mouth that Jesse's seeking. Bring yeah. Tiger's girl out. She's your number one, your number one winter athlete. Put her on stage in some tights and a jacket Bruh. and click it shut, and I guarantee it, it you might have- it'll sell. <laughs> like Paper said, it might have been exploitative, but in the action sports arena, it ain't even gotta be. Uh, it ain't even gotta be um, 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 snowboarding. Go get that girl that had her arm bit off by the shark, no, and that, that's no. That's no joke. You know. Go gra- go go scoop her up. You know? you know. Pay her enough money to get her to jump ship, and you got somebody. You know, like you said, it's exploitative, but in marketing and and. And advertising what isn't, you know. They already um, got the number one that. chick. Um, but They've again, got her. <laughs> I've been in those situations. I've been in situations where your hands aren't free and you only got one hand and you do have to pull and get that zipper in there just the right way and then pull it up. I don't care if it does get caught mid chest. If I can click that fucking thing down there at the bottom just to get it started, it works for me. Well, here's a, here's what that. I did before the show. Here's what I did before the show. Um, I was talking about this with my daughter, 14-year-old high school student, um, and she looked at the running show, and she saw this was on the, on the running show, and she said, what's so big a deal about being able to use one hand for a zipper? Can't you do that now? I said, you go get your coat and try it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like... All right, maybe that'll work. And then she walked off with her coat. That's all it takes. <laughs> it's for one demonstration like that. Yeah. Nobody ever thinks about it. No one. Right. It's, it's we're so normal to it. It seems like it's so embedded. You don't think about the fact. I mean, we can't all be show like IDs, that. but we have people put our coats on and zip them up and button our shirts for us. That's just a different <laughs> lifestyle. We not on there now. We still have to he's do on, our own clothes. He's on that Downton Abbey flow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, button this for me. Yeah, button that. Thank you. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I have no problem using I mean, both. You know, if it's on the ascot for you, for you drink. You know, <laughs> I have no shirt, problem using Shake up your cavassier in the glass a little bit before you drink it. We don't have that kind of lifestyle. Man, You're the Grand Marnier is... guy. Come on. <laughs> so for folks like us, Magna Zip may come in handy one day. It really hit home for me because I actually went running on Monday night. And the zip, the jacket that I wear, the zipper is rusting out, and I literally took me like five extra minutes to get it up, and I was pissed. And I looked over at my girl, she was like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like, "I can't get this damn zipper up." Oh and my god, it's like, like an old man. He's like an old man, mad at things he's wearing. I'm looking for like, the... sending this back. What's the policy? <laughs> In two years, this is going back. I'm That's looking hilarious. forward to the second part. So, of that, uh, I mean, we need to stay commercial. tuned. As Jesse said, this is the timing is right for this. We'll see what happens when it comes into t- the season for this type of gear to be purchased, which I believe is really soon. What are we talking? The next. Four to six weeks where they're gonna start oh, grabbing no, this stuff no. up. I'd say I'd say in the next couple in the next couple weeks because uh, like you said, the season's happening, you know. They're they they putting they're putting artificial snow in the mountains in Denver and whatnot. You know, they're waiting for that to ramp up. So I'd say in the next couple weeks. It's gotta happen in the next maybe three to four weeks if you're talking lead time, because they gotta put it on their most recent stuff. If they're just now talking about it, they already have a line in the pipeline that should hit stores within two weeks if they're doing it right. Okay. So, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll watch. I mean, the Northeast, the Northeast, yeah, I'm thinking about the four-week timeline where people start, you know, where it gets consistently cold and they start wanting to snowboard and ski and all that other stuff gets ready to ramp up. Um, all the expos are happening in the next two weeks. So all the ski and snow expos where people are getting rid of old stuff and bringing new stuff in yep. all across the country. So ours is happening November 14th. Yours back east will probably happen a week or two later. Yeah. And that's where you'll see some of that. Okay. 
Cool. So, speaking of stuff like boots, etc. Oh, one one quick note. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and get a sneak peek of that for y'all. The the designer of Under Armour's eyewear is a friend of mine who lives right here in Omaha. I just thought about that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. see if I can. I'm, and he always goes to those. Uh, he gets their early demos. I'm gonna see if I can get a sneak peek of the magazine for y'all. All right, continue. Nice. Okay. Yo, any of y'all heard what happened to Doc Martin? We're about to talk about it now, Ben. Nice segue, nice segue. Ben is like, he's, he's, like a hype, he's a perfect hype man. He asked those weird... He's like, weird, everybody's he's like those Sean no, tonight. Tonight. He asked that weird leading question, like, yeah. Hey. So. So. What about that? What about that, Doc Martin? No. So. I know, Sean. You can't send out run a show no more. We be stealing your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys are more than welcome to bring it up when the time is right. It's all good. Just let me know so I can throw it up on the screen. I'm good. Don't do a TMZ style like Ben does. <laughs> <laughs> you need my money on time. Man. So Doc Martin's is up for sale. Is my is my screen share up properly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Doc Martens, which a lot of us and I don't know about you know other parts of the country, but I can speak for the Northeast. Doc Martens boots has came back this past summer in full force. A lot of young kids are wearing Doc Martens boots, in particular that iconic, you know, boot with the tab on the back. The the what we call the skinhead boot. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, since you said it. <laughs> and and I had to, you know, when I when my daughter asked for a pair um, uh, last summer, I looked at her like, you don't know. Why do you want those? <laughs> and she was like, I like them, and you know, I'm starting to see people wear them. I like how they look with you know the whole look with dresses, and you know the whole. 90s look. Of, yeah, the punkish kind of look. Yeah. So, you know, it had, you know, for her, it was purely innocent. It had nothing to do with anything that I and some of you guys remember Doc Martens for. So I started looking into it and paying attention. So I was like, wow, yeah, they're really, like, I've seen dudes trying to thug out wearing Doc Martin boots now. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I mean, hoodie, baseball cap. Baggy, you know, sagging jeans and Doc Martens, you know, loosely laced. That's the new. Well, Guru did race. it. Guru did it. Yep, he did. Guru did Doc Martens. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, the product of Boston. So. Yeah. That's when Doc Martens got back on my radar yeah. last summer. And leading up into Christmas, I was like, am I going to get her a pair of these? Huh. I really debated it. I was struggling with it. Not even going to lie. And, and, and see, I would say it's funny that they've come back full circle, but Doc Martens have not gone out of style in the New England area. Mm. They, they are a staple that have remained consistent since, I would say, since 1989, 1990. Well, you can even take it further than that, D, in, in the fact that we talk about New Balance or we mm -hmm. talk about Peak and Anta. Doc Martens is international. They yeah. ain't going out of style in, in England and Europe ever. Yeah, they're, they're pop. they are very popular in, in, in the Northeast, you know, New England area, man. Like, so, for so, are we, so are we wrong for feeling how we feel, the way it resonates? And when I say we, I guess what Sean was saying to some other people. Because I see these... As the boots with the red laces. If I saw those boots coming with the red laces, uh -huh. I knew to go the other direction. The red <laughs> laces in those boots mean there's people coming to stomp a mud hole in your head. Period. Uh, they don't like your skin color, and they're coming to get you. That is the that is the essence of that boot, especially the black one. Now, I grew up in the punk era, too. You've seen girls with them in skirts and stuff like that, so it's not that big a deal. But it resonates so strongly I think, that I would ever I put a pair on. It huh. really did for me. I agree with Jesse. I can I can really. understand I can understand it resonating if you had personal experience with it. Um, I live in I live in the the Midwest heartland, Bible Belt. Call it what you want. There's no more prejudiced place on this planet than where I live, and they don't resonate like that for Charles me. Charles Barkley said Alabama is the most historically racist. <laughs> 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 
I'm just and, saying and, ridiculous. And I respect what you what your opinion what you're saying there ridiculous. Um and that's I'm why saying, I'm asking just I'm the saying, fact that it's my personal think, opinion so it resonates but No, I think you're right and I think regionally where you're talking about like for instance you were in Boston. Were you in Boston at the time? Oh yeah. Okay, so you were in Boston. Sean was in New York. So so that upper northeast, I can see that that might have been a thing there. Here, people don't have to wear Doc Martens to come stomp you out because of your skin color, so it was never a big issue. I just watched out for other skin colors. <laughs> I mean, and, and no, if I you, hear if, you. If, if you the came at me with a buzz head, then that, that's what I mean. Is like, I think you're right for feeling how you feel because well, that's your personal because attachment. You know that that particular type of person, I'm not going to hold my tongue here, that skinheads and people like that chose that boot particularly and they put red laces in them to signify what they were about. But so I even think, if I you think didn't know, that's what they chose. And so I when I see that... Well, that I sounds that's like regional. white beaters. Choose but I think that's, tops over t-shirts. I, I think that's regional because here they wore military combat boots and tucked their jeans into them. It wasn't Doc Martens, bro. So, mm. so that's, like, that's like Crips and Bloods from Cali acted differently than Crips and Bloods from Florida. They all have their regional idiosyncrasies. So so here, because I live next to a military base, uh, Strategic Air Command has all the military there. And so there was a lot of Army surplus through the Midwest. That's what we watched out for, is fatigues tucked in to high-booted jack boots, you know? So it wasn't Doc Martin to us. To us, Doc Martin's meant CBGBs out here. We we was we was looking at the at New York City as in punk. So so, so the I question think, is, since we're talking about Sean's new age, fourteen year old daughter, do we move forward with that, or do we hold I, that against her, or what? I I absolutely applaud her for it because that is why this world constantly changes and things do get better because it's somebody like that. With a dad like hers that had that experience, that's going to change more minds than a black president, or is going to change more minds than somebody regurgitating or reiterating older stories and holding that history in place and not allowing anything to move forward. Yeah, because I don't think you, I don't think, I think you guys really understand it because you know, ridiculous. You've seen me in a sneaker store, so right. you you know how my mannerism is with a pair of footwear and stuff. Right. So. You can imagine when I had to go buy this Christmas present, how tough it was for me to pick up that box, those boots, and bring those home. I'll 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 paint it in a slightly different light, and I'll put myself uh, squarely in front of in front of that train. My mom grew up in the '60s, like a lot of our parents. My mom was in high school at that time. I'm married to a white woman now, man. Can you imagine? what she had to go through to get over the hump she had to get over culturally, now that woman loves my wife like there's no tomorrow because her child helped fa facilitate a change in her. It helped help push past the stereotypes, the rhetoric, the hypocrisy, all of those things. I, could, I, I, I actually asked my mom before I even started dating my wife. I said, what would you say? Like, how would you handle it? Because I don't want to offend you. If this girl is out of here, I need to tell her to get out of here right now. So in terms of changing history, I think it does take a generational leap. I think it does take a brave soul. I, do, I think it does take a dad like Sean that loves his kid more than he hates the memories to push things forward. So I applaud him if, if, if in fact, he did get her these boots because I think her and her friends and other people like her are now going to change minds and paint things in a different light. And so the generational leap has happened where we always say it about the good old boys. Well, that counts for us, too. We're probably going to have to go away because we're not going to change our minds, but that new generation has already made the shift. Yeah, that's a good point because, yeah, I definitely didn't want to buy them. <laughs> I was trying to find every reason imaginable not to. But they sell them, and this is where we're getting to the point of the story here, with um, the, the Griggs family putting a 91.5% stake in the company up for sale. Um, and its value, they want their value, you know, equity at $486 million for wow. a 91.5% stake. So this, uh, we say all this, viewers and listeners, to say 
Some of us really didn't know Doc Martens was still popping like that, based on what our old memories were. And $486 million for that company came as a shock to me, but um, apparently it doesn't. You know, a private equity firm called Premira is going to snap up that 91.5% stake for um, $186 million. So that was shocking to me. I was like, wow. It's one thing uh, my mother was lucky enough to instill in me at a very young age. She explained to me about the difference between trends and classics. She wouldn't get me just any leather. She got me a bomber leather. She wouldn't get me just any blue jean. She got me a quality blue jean. She helped me understand the difference between the two. And so when you understand the difference between the two, you can recognize things and say, that's classic. It's never going to go out of style. It'll keep coming around whether we like it or not. And the dock market is one of those things. Because well, everybody tries to rip it off, and they can't. I've actually had friends go uh, on an exchange program over to Oxford, and then they take the, the trip every year, and you know the program does that trip, and they take them to the Doc Martens factory. And that's also where I, I, I get some of the, the, the thoughts I have about the brand or the shoe. I was never a fan because I'm a running shoe guy. I wasn't going to walk around in boots. I mean, but I respected it because I'm like, that was the, Doc Martens was the first really expensive shoe I had ever seen. I'm, I'm like, everybody's walking around in these boots. And don't forget the sandals. Remember them thick sandals they used to make? I don't remember those. Oh, man. See, that's another thing. See, Doc Martens made it. Imagine that bottom. They rounded the corners off and put a strap sandal on, like a Jesus sandal on it. It was a thick yeah. ass Doc Martin sandal. Yeah. Wow. Um, it, it was wild. And so I'd look at him, and here was this $150, $125 pair of sandals and boots. And I'm like, damn, what's up with these shoes? Why are they so much when my $80 Reeboks is good enough? Or, you know, my, 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 my barely $100 Air Forces are good enough. Or my Pegasus, you know. So for me, it was a culture shock because it had the British flag on it. They often came in those crazy loud colors that were other than the jackboot versions that, that, you know, you guys are talking about. And we saw a lot of that out here, that caramel color, the, the British flag one with the extra high neck on it. Um, these were crazy to me, way before Customs, way before Jordans, way before any of that. And so... Um, I think that's why I see them the way that I do, is because even even for the, the the negative connotation that they do bear, and that's not to negate any of that, because I, I hear you on that. For me, again, it was wor uh, 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 military boots, and you remember those uh, like Belle Biv DeVoe uh, climbing boots, the hiking boots? Mm -hmm. That was that was another. Yeah, of course, I don't mess with that. If you, got, if you got that in a lumberjack, we can't we can't we can't deal with each other. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know? I mean, you're you're right, and you know, I think it's the same parallel to what we're talking about with sneakers, where regionally certain people had their own outfits and uniforms. You know, New right. Orleans Jabos and Reebok Classics. You know, in Atlanta where heat is, it was something different. In New York and Cal, you know, they had the Dope Boys in Cali. I mean, that's no different here. What we're talking about. Right, so. and and I think that's why, like to that point, I think that's why it, it's it's not so much a shock to me because I was I was introduced to the Doc Martens brand a little bit more globally. I, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you were also in a design field, so you were brought, you were you were shown things a lot in a different light. I think also too. I mean, besides where you came from, you also had a different mindset and how you looked at them and how they were presented to you. From a right. design aspect, well, and then, I mean, you know, and that's not think, to discredit you or anything that you no, said. I think you're, I think you're absolutely. said you, you're maybe a step ahead of what everyone else may have understood. No, I agree. I think you're absolutely right because again, we we face different things. You know, like what's scarier to me wasn't the black boots with red laces. To me, it was khakis and a polo. Like no right. bullshit, because I went to a prep school in which. You literally didn't think you could have a future because you were told every single day how you would not measure up. Right. So to me, that was that was more. I, I'd rather like okay, let's let's knuckle up, let's get ready for a fight. I can handle that. 
Mm-hmm. To me, it was having the rug pulled from under me in a different way. So, like, that reaction you have to a Doc Martin is the same re- reaction I have to khakis and loafers. Like, no bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's, That's so funny right now. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. Mr. Anita Heat, calling in live from the Poochin Jackson sample factory. Oh, <laughs> 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 I, I, I love it when he, when he gets on it. Which joints are you destroying this week? Uh, shit, where do I start? <laughs> Well, quick question for you before you get into which samples you're destroying to make sure certain shoes don't see the light of day. We thank you for your service, by the way. Um, Doc Martin boots, how do they resonate for you down in the ATL? Um, I, you know, it's funny because we didn't really have. Um, I, I remember seeing them and wondering what the hell are those thick ass soles. <laughs> um, that's pretty much, you know, said the main thing. I mean, you know, down here we was. We were heavily influenced by New York because we had so many people coming down here from New York and you know yeah. the tri-state area. So we were, you know, we were when I was coming up, it was you know the Timberland and you know the, the struggle with do you fuck with Timberlands or not, and then it was also the um, uh, the high tech, the high tech more yeah. so than Doc Martens. You know, I mean, it, you had a few people down here that did Doc Martens, but they clearly weren't from here. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. like. So mm-hmm. I, I remember them, but like I said, it was it was more of the iconic thick ass sole with that yellow stitching. That's that's all I really remember. And I'm like, yo, what the hell are those? And I remember seeing more more chicks wearing them than I did dudes. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. That's they true. Dominate. That's it's true. I saw a lot of a lot of chicks wearing them. You're yeah, right. I, I saw more chicks wearing them than dudes. Like chicks could get away with that shit, but if dude rocked them, you'd be looking like, all right, dog, what, you know what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> That's so, a so, so, he, so he, if a dude showed up at the club where you and Dredd is working with Doc Martens on, does he get in? You mean now? Now, yeah. Uh, now, yeah. You know, we, we probably let that slide. I mean, we, it's not no letting slide. I mean, as long as it's, it's a boot type shoe like that, they, you, they're normally pretty straight. You well, and the thing saying? is, you probably wouldn't see the collar, like, because Doc Martens are, don't have a thick neck, so that, that would go under the pants. Yeah, but even once again, it's nothing like that signature thick ass soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I can see them shit from a mile away. Like, oh, those are clearly, those are clearly dark. I tell you what. I tell you what. In my ten years, when we was back in the bean, you came to deal with Docs. I wasn't letting you in. Straight up. Really? I would check them out under jeans and all. And I'd be like, nah, yeah, we ain't going with tough. those. Because we knew if something went down, them boots was kicking a head, kicking a hole well, in your head. No, but, so but you wasn't you coming in with them it, boots. If you let them in with those, I mean, if you did let them in with those, then you could, you almost could have let, let in uh, Timberlands. Exactly. Yeah, Tim, steel toes and everything else. So we was like, nah, we're not so going Tim, with those. So Tim didn't, Tim's didn't work either? In Boston? No. No, so you just didn't no. let in New York. In Boston, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, Roxbury, to... in Roxbury and Dorchester, maybe. Yeah, but when you try to go downtown where all the white folks is at, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's, no, that's, that's a totally different club. Now you see why I'm scared of khakis and try to control everything. No, you got to have on some shoes, or you got to have on, you know. No, they try to control that. So Tim's, mm. if we weren't doing Tim's, we weren't doing Docs, and we weren't doing Steel Toes. Hmm. Interesting. So, four hundred and eighty-six million dollars came as a real shock to me, y'all. So, nah, like you said, like somebody said, it's an international brand. So, the money that they're gonna make overseas, they laugh at us. Like, all right, well, these people just think they're just gonna associate it with like far, like you know what I mean, the the. I mean, even I now, you know, like I went to, you know, D just recently had a, the Central Massachusetts Film Festival, but the one before that, that he had, um. A few months ago in the summer, you know, we were at a steampunk fashion show. Mm. And even there, I did not recall seeing a lot of Doc Martin boots. Do you, D? I don't no. recall seeing a lot of Doc Martin. I only remember seeing two two people and there were two guys wearing them. And that was kind of what I expected in that environment when we did that fashion show was I was expecting, because that was what I knew. I knew it was a punk movement and I knew it was, you know, the skinhead movement where this was part of their uniform. So well, to not see it, I was like, wow, like, I'm expecting to see Doc Martin's on feet here right now, and I don't see any of them, you know? From what, 
Well, let's what I understand down. from uh, the, the, that punk movement, what I, what I gathered is you, they're trying to be authentic. You know how, like, sneakerheads are trying to be authentic? I feel like the punks are, too, so they're going for, like, the, the Italian boot, like, the real, like, cow high, dried, and, like, Vegan. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, you're right, man. I have seen that. Hey, that's I think what that's, they I think that's, now, like. I think that's more hipster punk, though. Like, I, I truly do. I think because hipsters have a way of trying to recall authenticity through... It, they're the same yes. reason why we got this... this like uh, the, vintage sneakers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's, 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 that's the reason right? why they're hipsters. That's, that's my, trying why they're to get hipsters. me started. That's my point. That's, That's my why point. they're hipsters. So. And so, so like, the, the, <laughs> but even even to even from the standpoint that if you know a true punk from the punk era, they don't like the association with with anything racial. They were anti-establishment. They weren't anti-race. You know, but that but it got it got melded in because those who were anti-race saw the establishment as mixing. And, and doing those things, so they yeah. often get a bad connotation. Yeah, that, that movie Higher Learning definitely didn't help with that either. Oh, exactly. absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's absolutely what exactly. I did with that shit did not. Absolutely. And, and, and <laughs> most of, and uh, most okay, of us, we starting to understand the East Coast a little more now? And most, most <laughs> of <laughs> us. <laughs> yo, but yo. Is, well, good thing you didn't told. see the British version. Truth be told, Higher Learning did not help with that. That shit did not help at all. No, you're absolutely right. It didn't. But again, again, that's 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 that that's that that media. That's where the changing or the making up and changing of minds happens. Because I remember I was on a college campus at that time. Most of us who are who are the same age, we were somewhere near a college campus at that time, bruh. Walking to class the next day was rough. But, oh no, there was no class the next day. It was, yeah, yeah. It it was was like, when all those movies came out. It was like out. NBA Live. Was, like fuck that. We ain't going. Like, oh, That's how you know it's a movie. You said live. He's yeah, like, I don't yeah, know, exactly. watching these movies and going to school with all these white kids. It gets me kind of yeah, nervous. Yeah, ben, that's your homework. You need to watch Higher Learning. Right. Right. It, was, right. it was tough. They the, go, the try, go download NBA Live. It has some people, it has <laughs> some, yeah, it has some people that you can remember. Um, and, then on, and then on top of that. And you need to watch American History X. And then on oh, top of that. Oh, yes. that shit was crazy, too. American on top History of that, X. your boy ran track. I was like, what? I, I can't go nowhere tomorrow. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. I'm like, funny. Tyra Banks getting shot? I can't go nowhere. Yeah, Tyra Banks caught it bad. Caught it, man. And all he wanted, and then on top of that, all Remy wanted to do was be an architect. Same thing. I was so <laughs> you sure you see you catching flashbacks? Right. This the one for real. <laughs> I was struggling with the whole situation. <laughs> you got re mad about it. It seems, it seems like you're you're still struggling with it right now. <laughs> yeah. Go back and watch all those movies now. Go back and watch Do the Right Yo, Thing. Since we're on the subject, man, oh. Ricky just wants to play ball, man. Ricky See, just man. Wants to play ball. <laughs> but, but that's you a, just started you know what? You just started deep. We gotta get ridiculous you know what? moment. But I love right. that we got I love that we got on this subject though because Ben just said Ricky just wanted to play ball. He's right. It brings up a very interesting point about media and our connotations. Media as attached to our products, our environments. Because you're right, man. I was I was also from the projects, and I had friends that lived in South Central. That movie was real. Oh my God, you came out of that movie flipping out. Yo, dope. Why she hit you, dope? But why she hit you, dope? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's man, shut up, man. Yeah, don't ever ask me that question twice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what you hit me for? Oh, man. All right, so let's move it into a lighter note, considering uh, uh, the, the feelings that Doc Martens and their sale tri mm. uh, triggered. Yeah. This is the why. This is the why, Roshi. I might. I, uh, whoa. Oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Oh, my bad. My oh. Oh, I, I thought I had muted fire. myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey. D, do you have I'm a sorry. gunshot? I'm glad he said that and not me. I thought I, <laughs> oh. I, thought I, I, thought I muted myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The wild roach, man. The Y3 Roshi. 
<laughs> no, it's the why, Roshi. Why? Yeah, nah, you messed that one up already. New York City just now. <laughs> That's tough. I didn't even get a chance to intro dude to the table, and he got. Yeah. He lit the first thing that popped in my head. I'm sorry. He lit that one up right away. Wow. Right. Okay, so we'll just let everybody else weigh in on this Y3 2014 Spring Summer Casa wow. Racer. I this like that. This shoe already exists in a high top version. This is the low top version. I like Y3 somewhere else too. I like Y3 stuff. I just don't like the price. If I could get into it at a price that was more appropriate, then I mean, it's look. With like the what? Price, like what? Let me let me stop you right there. Like how much? Like for this? Yeah. I'd pay I'd pay one twenty for that. Yeah. I mean you don't have to you don't have to agree, but I'm saying Oh no, no, I'm saying it's not gonna be one twenty. I'd pay no, no, exactly that's that's my point. You because wait, wait, wait. You two will both pay one hundred twenty dollars on purpose? <laughs> I don't I like Y three. I like I like what they did when they joined with Adidas. Uh, like I mean, that's what I see when I see the three stripes on the back. So I like I like what they did, but not Y three isn't was it made for us? Why wasn't it? I'm sorry. Why wasn't it? Because my pants aren't that tight. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Shut his mic off. Shut his mic off. You put him, put him on the <laughs> door. Good night, Ben. So is he saying is he saying that's a prereq? That's a prereq on that shoe? Is that what he's saying? That, and that's exactly my point. Like we, as much as we like to say we my against pants stereotypes, are not that tight. that's terrible. As much <laughs> like as much as we, I got a Y three tie. Like as gotta, much as we like to say we are progressive, we often slip back into the same stereotypes that blame that that have everybody blaming sneakerheads and sneaker industry and lumping us all together. If you have like that, that makes me right. want to buy the shoe and rock them and have you be like, Thank damn, those look kind of fresh. Thank, Thank you. you. That's exactly my point. <laughs> I'll wear them just to make you say they look hot. But, 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 but he won't. But he won't, though. <laughs> yeah, I know I won't. <laughs> but, but my, point, my, point being, my point being, the price the price of entry on this shoe is what causes the problem because we know that's going to be a three hundred plus dollar Y three shoe and it's just an Adidas. That's why we think crazy about it because you it's, it's the same argument that we put up that has them still making stupid ass Jeremy Scott shoes. Yeah, I wear right. this you, over a right. Jeremy Scott. You're right. You're right. And I and and for somebody who could never even sniff a Y three anything because of the price and the size. I, you know, most of that stuff is, is 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 well done. It looks nice. I, this shoe in particular, you know, n normally they come in, they come in, they're creative and they do their own thing. But this, right. the first thing I when I saw this shoe, the first thing I thought of was the Rochi. So, I mean, like I said, I agree with what you're saying, ridiculous. Um, but that's why I, that's why I wanted to stop you and ask you what, how much would you be yeah. willing to pay? Because that's why I, said I know a lot of people. Paper. I know a lot of people who wouldn't be willing to play nothing for them, but right. you know what I'm saying? Like it's not like their silhouettes don't be you know, a lot of their silhouettes are dope. So I'm trying to find one right now that's that's similar to that. Um but but yeah, that's why I said one twenty would probably be the ceiling for it. Um only and again This is easily I'm, gonna be a two hundred, two hundred twenty dollar shoe. Ab I'm absolutely. Two fifty. Absolutely. I was thinking two fifty. If not more. If not way more. Yeah, I was why, thinking two fifty three. Y3 stuff is astronomical. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be ridiculous. It's some ridiculous Now, shit. I do like this shoe, even even despite the fact that it reminds me of the Roshis, which I hate. Even mm -hmm. though I, I have one pair of Roshis that I like. And other than that, I can't get with Roshis. Not at all? Not feeling them? I, I, I have a particular pair that was like made for trail, so it has a toe cap and grip mm. tape and you know, it doesn't look as hipsterish <laughs> as as what I see them looking oh, like dude, as I walk through New the York. Trail, the trail roshis are nice. It's the funny trail. that you say hipsterish because down here I don't see none of the hip hip, you know, type beats, whatever you want to well, call it. It's a hipster it. requirement up here to have roshis. Word. Mm -hmm. That is <laughs> crazy because down here it's like, you know, there's still a lot of people sleeping on them. I see more women wearing them than guys. Wow. And uh, Amani will tell you, she she sees it every day, too. Wow. It's, it's a hipster requirement to have flood cuff jeans and Roshis on. Mm, mm. Say a word. That's crazy. Flood cuff anything. Flood cuff anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's a there's a that's a movement right now. Blood cuff any pet. That's true. Blood cuff. Is that what he called it? Blood cuff. Blood cuff. He called he called it flood cuff. He called it flood cuff. Just you know we call it tight rope, baby. You know what I mean? We call it peg leg. Peg leg. Do you know what I'm talking about? Peg leg jabos. Oh man. You know how we used to get down? Peg leg jabos with a little jabot on on the. You know what the funny thing is? I'm not gonna lie though. I used to go to my tailor and have him purposely gun. We called it gun in the Caribbean. Taper wow. or gun our pants. Yep. So I would go wow. Yeah. It's all coming much, back around. How much extra did they cost you, D, out of curiosity? You know how much it used to cost me? $10 a pair of pants. Yeah. Wow. They, cut, they, cut, they cut a gap yep. in the seam and exactly. put it back together. Yep. I can't actually peg uh, leg now. I can't do it. I can't bring man. myself to do it. But Miss I can. those days. Oh. Well, I you can't do the flood cup. New York for you. I'm glad <laughs> Amani is back. Amani, I was talking about how in New York, crazy. the hipster uniform is flood cuffed pants of any kind and roshis. Oh yeah, that's that's the norm. Yeah. And a members only jacket. Oh. And um, wow. Ray Bans. With not the sunglasses though, the regular glasses. No, yeah, not even absolutely. the glass in them. Just knock it out. Exactly. With <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they do. They do the Russell Westbrook, huh? Oh, I can yeah. see. With I can flag. see. I just need to look like I can't see. Right. Exactly. right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that's when crazy. you said that heat about these, I was like, damn it! Oh, but I still funny. like them. That's funny. Oh, you know what? On, if, they if, if you say that, they they gonna heat these up. They gonna heat these up then, Pat. No, not at that price point. No, because they can't afford them. Not at that price point. Roshi's the, is seventy dollars. The These are going to be two oh, ten twenty can't afford to them. start. The hipsters can't afford them. They just that's look a, like that's the white one right there. They got a couple <laughs> other views on sneaker news. Let's see a white one. It's a white one right there. I'm Ooh. telling you, there was like a pair with the same mm. sole. You know, it's, I don't even want to call it a high. It looks a lot more oh. free than it does Roshi's. Dude, it that does in the white. Roche. Yeah, in the white it looks free. It looks a lot yeah. more freeish than it does. Okay, in the white I would pay ninety. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Now, see now the white one is all mesh. You see how the mesh goes into the leather? The yeah. black one is like neoprene yes. and then mesh. Oh. Yeah. So the black one's a little bit fresher if you ask me. The white okay. one is like uh, but the black You know one, what it looks like to me? Now that I look at it, it looks like a Puma. Uh, the Puma yeah. Fast five hundred. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. Ago. I yeah. see the influence. I definitely see yeah. the influence. But the strap on the back, you should, you know that's you know that's like an uh that's elastic, so that's gonna give you a little support back there. Then yeah, they got that large that. plastic CPU on the side for a little support. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's very very. For three hundred dollars, did you just say plastic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Get the fuck out of here. What do you think it's going to be? Yeah. Plastic. Plastic. That's crazy. It ain't porcelain. We you know what I'm saying? Got these playing two things. It's not dollars. porcelain. <laughs> I'm just tripping. I just want people to hear that. Like, oh, yeah. They got a plastic. That boot crap um, over there. Come on, son. Yo, yes. I, I, hold on. Yeah, keep talking about this because I want to pull up the Rick Owens Adidas that I saw. That's Yo, can I'm... you pull up the actual, the Quaza Racer or something? Because the Derrick Rose 2 took a part off of this sneaker, the original version of this sneaker. It's like the an original elastic. original Quasar Racer? I'm sorry? Did you say the original Quasar Racer? Yeah, because I feel like there was a pair before this. And I, I matter of fact, I know there was a pair before. If not, it has the same Y3 Quasar name. And it has like these hooks on each side. And when the laces are tied, it's elastic and it pulls the sneaker closer. Like, you see the pink one right there? Or the yeah. even the black and white one. You see... The piece that I'm talking about, that piece, yeah. 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 Derrick Rose 2 took that off of this sneaker. See, this is another Adidas that I like that because of how wild it is, the Rick oh, Owens then, one. I mean, what is... Oh, yeah. yeah we, spoke about, we spoke about that shoe here on the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember. I remember. That's, that's why I wanted to try and go back and find it because I really like that shoe. I like when they push silhouettes like this. Um... Which is why I would give Ooh. that. I, it's why I would give the uh, the Adidas that Y3 a try. But again, at price point, at what price point? That that's what stops the exploration. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to try a shoe at a at an astronomical price point. Yep. Like exactly. you said, try to try a shoe. It'd be different if you knew what it was. You were a fan and you already had experience with the shoe. But you know, to try a shoe at two to two fifty to three hundred, that's that's a hell of a price to, to try something. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. Like they got this Rick Owens boost right here. That's crazy. What is? See that right there? I love that. But I but I'm not gonna try it it's out. Like a goddamn moon boot. Get out of here with that. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, but maybe I was in the market for moon boots. Are those laces uh, uh, that's that's making that that little that little box on there? Are those are yeah. those actual laces? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the way they got it laced. Yep. Oh, Actually, I think that might I think that might be the way it laces. <laughs> wow. Yo, yeah. since we got a full house, since uh, who's that? Chris from Supra, and they got Kadoma here. Some shits are. Yep. Yeah. They have joined us. Mr. So, no, no, there it goes, there it goes. That's regular lacing. So what is everybody sne sneak? Well, what sneak everybody wore today? Oh, we're not doing that right now. Come on, son. <laughs> 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 we got a full house. I'm trying to debo the show. What's wrong with you? It's better than talking about Rick Owen and Adidas. Why? Why? Hey, why after what you already said about Y3, that's, you are that's right. That's my point. Oh, no, but, dude. But, but here, here's my point. Why is it better than talking about Rick Owen's Adidas? But uh -oh. see, because the, I mean, that's me personally. I can't get a sneaker that I can't play ball in. That's not gonna help me. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna jump higher. But this ain't obsessive. <laughs> this ain't a, but this ain't obsessive ball shoe disorder. Right. <laughs> 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 With some of the best running sneakers, I could play ball in. Yeah, that, that, right. I'm just saying, if we're gonna talk sneakers, we gotta we we. This is where negative stereotypes about our culture abound. Is when you we can't stay open to other things. There's nothing wrong with that Rick Owens, except for if you like it or you don't. But it's still a sneaker. It was still designed. We debate those kind of things. I just think that's that's where we go negative. That's where we go uh, hype beast because well, you just can't talk about nothing else. Hey Ben, what's that? Try to defend me playing ball and some running sneakers and watch what happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Shalom. You're going to start Shalom. getting some more homework you don't straighten up soon. Word, man. You're going to be energetic. like, you do your homework, you can't be on the show. I'm young and energetic. <laughs> Eject. <laughs> you do that homework, we'll sit on the bench. Got it. Hey, we, we need you like we the Jetsons. We need the sound clip of, uh, of that Bill Cosby when he was, Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next you up, coming back, Kamikaze 1. Finally. I'm, I'm muting myself. <laughs> <laughs> really? Don't leave this to ridiculous, too. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a high five, Ben. Ben, tag. You're it. Go. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. Me? Nice. Good on yeah. Ball, ball shoe. That's all yeah, you Let's go, Mr. Basketball. What you got for us yeah, on this go, one? Ben. About the Kamikaze one. The Kamikaze one, it's not a bad looking shoe. I really like the. It's better than the Kamikaze hybrid that Swiss Beats put out when he first got to Reebok. So that's cool. I believe it was the Kamikaze 3, which more people want to see than the 1. I don't really personally know too many people that want to see the Kamikaze 1. Me personally, I don't mind it, but I will probably won't get it. Alright, tell me about the basketball stuff. I don't care about the hype beast crap. Go on mute. Quick homework. Who wore it? <laughs> Hurry up, man. Who wore it? Who wore it? Who wore the Kamikaze? The same person that wore the Kamikaze 2 and the same person that wore the Kamikaze 3. Hurry up. Who? Sean oh. Kemp. Who else wore the Kamikaze? Okay. Sean Kemp wore it. Oh, that's it. You're good. You uh, met your no, time. No, no, somebody no, on Spurs wore it. No, somebody on David Robinson Spurs wore it, too. You met your requirement. Don't no, blow it. That doesn't matter. <laughs> what you say? Don't blow it. Oh, that doesn't matter. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Who else? You got your, you got oh, your, heart. Right. you got your A. Stick with it. Relax. Yep. You got my gold star. <laughs> there's only one. There's only one person who's known for wearing this shoe, and he and he, he balled in this shoe. I just never was a fan of this shoe. Mm -mm. It looks what is it about the Kamikaze one that you decide to bring it back second or third? Yeah. Because nobody checked for it. Nobody's checking for it. No one checked for the first one. Right, exactly. They said it was the first one. No, well, they put out it, the second have, one first. They wouldn't didn't it have made sense game. to put this one out first? Yeah, of course, but yeah. it's Reebok. Yeah, they don't it, make sense. They didn't yeah. check for it the first time. But it, I mean, I remember seeing these on shelves for like back in the day for 30, I mean, truthfully, you know if we're looking like, at if we're looking at it from a design standpoint, I actually like the design of this one better. Um, but you're right. Why bring it out second? 
Like I've Third. always like I've oh, third really yeah. at all. Like, yeah. I'm like I like this one better than the Kamikaze too. I, that's just me personally, but I remember Sean Kemp doing more damage in the two. This guy has a tall boy chorus. Now, <laughs> <laughs> a chorus tall boy at that. God damn. <laughs> the, 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 re- the reason why the reason why I like this shoe and and a few others from this era that Reebok was putting out was because they were very simply making dope shoes that were in black and white. Period. And they were killing. Yeah. These shoes were outselling Nike shoes with simple black and white. Not all of them. I not was about to say. But a lot of Reeboks black and white right. in your face shoes were black and white. No and they colors, had this, no hype. And, and they, they were had crushing. this real innovative way of taking the design all the way to the floor. Yeah. There, the, even though there was a midsole, obviously, you you couldn't always, from a distance, distinguish the padding from the shoe. They took the designs all the way to the floor. Shaq Gnosis, this, Kamikaze 2. Um, they, uh, that's what, from a, from an aesthetic standpoint, this came way before all over print. You these know what shoes, I mean? These shoes represent a time when a footwear design for a sneaker wasn't just limited to the upper. It made it right. all the way to the floor and around the shoe. And they and they had a habit. They had a real consistent habit of doing that. You look at the ES22. You look at yeah. the, uh, this, the Kamikaze, the Shaq Gnosis, even the first, the Shaq Attack. All of their designs went all the way to the floor. They were yeah. they they Reebok. I I, I don't want to give them credit for starting it, but they surely innovated the trend of of a full shoe design all the way underneath. Yep, and a lot of that is missing these days. Yep. You know, there's, there's a lot of people who are just designing uppers and slapping them on bottoms from yep. so many different companies. And these shoes represent that era where, like, Reebok was saying top to bottom, you know, floor Ooh, to ceiling. Uh, another, we're designing one, this uh, shoe. another one, the, the Frank Thomas shoe. Big same Hurt, thing. which is also same coming back out. The Big Hurt, same thing with the... And the same thing with the Steve Francis shoe. The design went all the way to the floor. Reebok was one of the first to actually start wrapping their midsoles inside the upper materials. And they take it all the way down to the, to the court. I, I love that about a lot of their designs from that era. So, so that's why I like this shoe is because it represented for me, it represents for me, that era and seeing just bold, brash, in-your-face shoes in simple black and white. None yeah, of this I really, crazy shit we see now. I really did like the Steve Francis. I'm going to try and bring that up real quick just to. So, Sean, would you call this sneaker a, a official throwback? This is a two part question. You'd, you'd call this a throwback, yes or no? This is an official retro, yeah. Okay. What time qualifications does it take before you can call a sneaker a throwback or a retro? I think, if it, I think if it's disappeared off the market for five years or more, and then you bring it back, it could be a true retro. Five years? Five, you know, five agree years with that? or more. Five years? No, nah, I'm not going with that. No, nah, what do you think? <laughs> What'd you I say, Jess? I mean, I think you need at least ten. At least I'd, ten. Or in terms of a retro, I mean, you can put out different colorways, and you can do a couple seasons. It's got to be at least ten years off the market, not seen, and then. I think it. I think it takes an era shift. I think it takes a, a generational gap to take yeah. that. So, um, your. I think it has to be your kids who are picking the shoe up. Like, oh mm. damn, check this out. So that's why I say I think ten years is about right. Mm. Man, I, I'm. I'm not even gonna say that. I'm not even gonna give it a amount of time. I think, uh, you know, history has something to do with it. You know, maybe it's an error shift. Maybe it's time, or maybe it's something an athlete actually so, did in a shoe. So would year. you? So would you buy a Kobe shoe as a retro now? Because that's been over ten years. I would think. I mean, we've seen the Kobe's retro on, on under the Adidas label. Right. And I see well, that right. as a fitting that's the only retro. Label. Okay, uh, that's the only I'm label sorry. I can retro though. You can't. Yeah. You won't yeah. see any Nike Kobe's retro. Exactly. It's not possible yeah. yet. Yep. That's okay. that's well, wait, 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 wait. Don't see that. Well, the Mellow 1.5 is getting ready to come back. Yeah, I was just about and to say that. And that's less than 10 uh, years. I think that's a bad choice, too. Exactly. <laughs> come on, look who's putting it out. I think but I'm just saying. Choice. No. It's less than 10 years. No. Yeah, I think you that's got, really well, right. Well, I mean, you can't choose retros, and that's why it's not working. 
You can't choose a retro. The public will choose what's a retro. And so if you try to fork feed retros, you're wrecking the game. We've talked about this. Well, no, that's, that's, true. Not. that's true. That's it's definitely true. true. But what is the Ben has a good question. What is the what is the time period where you should disappear before you bring it back? I don't know I, that there I is say, one. I say my rule is a, a whole presidential term plus so. That's why Ooh, I said there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, oh wait, I was I was thinking right, a term. whole presidential term is only one. One term, that's four years. That don't count. <laughs> I said plus some. That's why you I said, said plus five. some. Yeah, you said plus some. That's now, what I think. I asked, there was a um, there was a two, two at least. You can't get nothing done with one term. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, technically speaking, how many how many Jordans are actually really retros based on your rule? Yeah, hold on a second. If um the Jordan one that was uh. Re-released in 1994 with the uh, special box. That one wasn't called a retro, if you guys remember. Mm -hmm. And it was shorter than the than the original OG one. Remember? Yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's why we got this mid top that we so, call eyes now. Right. So so it, it was just a re-release or a reissue. And then I mean the term retro didn't come to to what shoe? The retro didn't. The retro term hasn't come out until at least anything the, after 2000. I think because the, official, the 99, the 99, and the 2000 release of Jordan retros weren't called retros. They were just called you know, re-releases, yeah. and they had a number associated with them. Yeah. 2000 same or 99. The, same with the Jordan, uh, the 12 new book. Even up to that one, it wasn't called a retro. That was a re-release. I think right. retro didn't retro come into play really heavy when they started to do the countdown packs. We're talking semantics here. Seriously. Uh, all right, sorry no, about that. Retro would mean that it went back to the original design. So, but that, that's the problem that I have with retro because they're not really retro. They, they might as well say re-release because some of this stuff is not exactly like you know. Chris makes a great point. If it's a retro, it's, it's actually bringing back what they had before and exactly. The way they did it, you know what I mean? Like I that's 100%. you know some of the, some of this stuff is not considered retro. Yep, I agree one hundred percent. That's what retro is supposed to be. It's supposed to be right, right. the original design, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't, you know what? To go back to the initial uh, question that Ben said, I I don't really know that there is a time. I think ideally you want to say ten years. You know what I'm saying? But you know, there's no there's no rule in the, you know in from the sneaker the he sneaker heaven saying. Oh, it has to be, you know, this or whatever. I think it's just a matter of, I really think it's hit or miss. I think they just decide, hey, they might hear some stuff, you know, some rumblings about a shoe, and they throw it out there to see if it works. You yep. know, yeah, some absolutely. some work, some don't. You know yeah. what I mean? So, the term retro. Well, the term if, retro. if we can't if we can't agree on what the term retro is, then there's no point in answering the question. Wait, no, wait, the wait. There's a sneaker right? heaven. <laughs> The term retro is probably the most powerful. The term, if you listen, the term retro is probably the most powerful marketing tool that they've used in who knows how long. Right. Oh, definitely in the last 20, 15, 20 years. You're right about yep. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that. I would and say not just sneakers either. I would On say everything. everything. With everything, oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah, but retro. I would say that within the sneaker market, it um, gave people the nostalgic feel to take them back to where they were. In 1989, when the Jordan 4 came out, in 1990, when the Jordan 5s came out, and everybody was talking about the sneakers or your life, you know, um, those those words are powerful when people start to think of where they were and who they were and, and what they were doing. Eight yeah. ball jackets and crazy yeah. shit yeah. took me took, took me back you know to where. Stupid Reebok 5500 where my boys had. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I, I, that's, that's what it took me to. I've, I've had people tell me, yo, man, I, I'm, I'm looking for the OG Spiz Ikes. This <laughs> <laughs> was only like fucking a few years ago. What are you talking about? Oh, my God. Like, oh, you know, six. Like, Oh, the OG shoes, like, wasn't that the first uh, wasn't that the first used shoes? Like the first Jordan that was more than one Jordan? That was, was a, one, right? The, what year did it come out? That was yeah, like no. that was the first Jordan. No. Yeah. Spiz Spizikes were were, were two thousand six first Jordan hybrid. Oh, six, right? That was right. Six, 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 were the first yeah, Jordan hybrid, right? Yeah, no. right here, I, the first Who, Jordan. What hybrid? was the first Jordan hybrid? The, the Jordan Force. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was Dub Zero. And then after that came the Jordan Force. What? All right. Hideous yeah, dub yeah. zeros. Ooh, woo. Which I ain't even gonna lie, the Jordan forces they got me with that twelve because I never thought the twelve was coming back. <laughs> 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 
But you know what? You know what though? I, we, make a, we, we make a great point, man. But I think the main thing is this is goes back to what we always say: a lot of the stuff is not made for us. I think the retro era of the kicks is made for us. It's just like Chris said. You know, it's it's a way for us to, to kind of channel back to where we where we came from, and you know, some stuff that we missed out on, we can maybe capitalize on it. So yeah, but I, you know, the thing about it is marketing probably doesn't work on us too much because we don't. We see stuff and we're like, yo, it really does. We've been talking about retro for the past 12 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, y'all can, y'all, y'all can play high minded if y'all want. That should work on me. Ask D. I mean, it works on everybody. It works. It, it, it does work on everybody. Man, but we know year, the difference between we know the difference between what's a retro and what's not. We're not oh, gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we also oh, know the difference between uh, you know stuff that was made similar to what we what we re- what we reminisce on, what we really wanted, and those are the things that we go after. The ones that are garbage, that are not as uh, hey. like our orig- the originals, we leave them alone. So I mean, when they brought out you know, when they brought and when the, when the magic happens and they do it well all across the board, like when they brought out all them twelves last last summer, summer summer before last. Woo. Well, let, let's get an opinion from a guy who has a lot of original release shoes right behind him, literally. SFK. <laughs> you you popped well, on in the middle of a question here. We just want you to answer real quick before we move on to, to the next shoe. All right. Uh, our little brother, Ben Berry, who, uh-huh. who was on punishment before he asked such a good question. <laughs> uh, and, and, punishment. and Chris Vidal helped to... Um, clarify the point with, you know, reissue versus retro, but Ben asked a good question. He said, how long is the time frame that a shoe should disappear from the market before it comes back as a retro? What do you think? Considering you have so many original shoes right behind you. I mean, it, it, for me, it's it's a, a two-fold question. As a consumer, I would want them as soon as possible because being a guy who owns a lot of original stuff, I, I can't wear none of this shit. I got shoes from like 1989 that I can't wear. I got probably like six or seven pairs of pressures in Miami that I can't wear that I bought just because I love that shoe. So as a consumer, I mean, I, I want like good retros to come back out. As a company or on the retail side as a company, I mean, it, it, it could be the same way. But in a sense that what they're bringing out isn't as good as what they once had. As a retailer, I would question a lot of this stuff because it, it's a lot of bullshit that's coming out, the way that they're retroing it, whether it be the quality, whether it be the colorways, whether it be just a lot of the stuff that they're doing to cut corners, I believe. I, as a retailer, I would question a lot of the, the retro stuff that's coming out. They may have a good story behind it, but that doesn't mean that uh, the consumer is going to respond to it. Like yep. I've seen a lot of bullshit that they've put out. I'm I'm kind of really disgusted at some of the stuff that that a lot of the brands are doing, not just one in particular. Mm-hmm. But like recently, they had um, they're redoing the Minot, but as a 360 Air Max. Yep, saw that. I knew you was going to be pissed at that. <laughs> I got the original men out sitting right here on the floor, right next to me. It's 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 horrible. And then I saw today that uh one of the colorways that they're doing of the Barry Sanders retro is the Michael Schumacher colorway, which was a European exclusive in nineteen ninety seven, I believe it was. Ninety seven, ninety eight. They're totally shooting on that shoe. That shoe is a classic to me, but I love Barry Sanders shoes. But like even when they first did the Barry Sanders retro. They shitted on that shoe. The quality was horrible. The design was off. It looked, it looked horrible. But people want that nostalgia. I can't kind of came in in the middle of that when you guys were talking about the nostalgia's sake and taking it back to where these people were when they first saw that shoe. But for me, as a, a consumer and somebody who's worked in retail, I'm kind of disgusted by the fact that they're not doing as good of a job in bringing back these shoes. Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. That's my tool. I, I do like your first answer, though. That was so honest. <laughs> as, <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you know, he he has that two folded, you know, two three dimensional view. That's why I wanted Quab to chime in on it because but, he has a lot of original. We say this on the show. He has a lot of original stories right behind him. His there's no retros behind him. 
but I like that he used the word consumer because from the consumer standpoint, I think that does bring in a different aspect because he's absolutely right. If you and, and what Chris said too, where were you at when you saw that shoe or when this was happening? That's why I, I recently copped a couple of pairs of uh, revolutions. That's why I got every color of twelves I could possibly find because I had some attachment to those and they had only brought out hybrid versions or half versions or not so good versions previously. When they dropped those twelves and that leather was good and the fit was exactly as I remember it personally, I went and got them all. All right. All right. So next topic. D, we should we skip this shoe and get right into WTF, or should we discuss this one real quick? I think we go. You could go straight to WTF. All right, we're going straight to WTF. Mm. All righty, this one's going to be really interesting. Favorite part of the show. See, I so, skipped the run. I skipped the run of show just to get to this. Have fun, D Wells. <laughs> oh, you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna set the stage. Because this definitely needs to be addressed and covered by us. So, Fort Worth, Texas. A police officer is reprimanding for, you know, following allegations that during a raid, he stole a pair of Air Jordan sneakers that were, quote unquote, in his size. Nice. <laughs> Officer uh, Officer Antoine Williams, a 13-year veteran of the department, was placed on restricted duty on Monday, according to department spokeswoman Tracy Knight. Williams has been working in the narcotics division since March uh, March 23rd, but he's been on the force and a police officer for 13 years. Hmm. So that means it's not the first pair he made a come up with. Definitely mm. not. I'm gonna no. never forget this. That was the first thing I thought of too. How many pairs he got from all these? Like, <laughs> he done came up. He, he probably he got, got a he, pair of Jordans. He, he, like, he got everything. He, he got cracks everything. Me, what cracks but, me up is that he's a narc cop and he's been stealing Jordans. Like, get some money. <laughs> 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 That's Listen, they're gonna, the they're gonna miss the money. They're not gonna miss them Jays, dog. At least oh, not no, till now. No. Look at, at least not until now. <laughs> Hey, well, MJs, MJs, MJs have runs. money values now. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That's why he suspended. You stole what? Oh, you stole some retros? You know those retros go for $500. So you stole $500 out of the evidence. Okay. Right. Well, you sit your ass down. There's a value to that shit now. Yeah. He's this a bad rekindles, boy. This rekindles memories for me of... Um, the massage you wear. Massage. Chris, Chris McDowell remembers this too. He was around this time too. This reminds me of when the 77th precinct in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, Crown Heights slash Bed-Stuy, for years, a good five to ten years, they would just go and shake down everybody selling drugs and narcotics imaginable for whatever. This Fort Worth sergeant faces charges for well, stealing Well, ladies and gentlemen, this now it takes it to a whole different arrested. level now. There's actually video. They're reporting from There's Channel 5, video. you know, NBC affiliate in Dallas, Fort Worth. They actually are reporting it. And um, they're saying that this has been going on for some time now. That he's actually. <laughs> he got a whole collection off of raids. <laughs> so they're saying that. Uh, so the gentleman whose home they raided, he spent the night in jail. When he goes back home, he noticed a number of pair of expensive shoes were missing from his closet, along with a, a game Grand Theft Auto. Wow. <laughs> and, and thousands of dollars in cash that he and his girlfriend were saving to rent an apartment. Police oh, yeah. reported finding uh, $1,060 in the raid, but Green said he had closer to $3,000. This is Green being the, the, the gentleman who was whose apartment home was raided. According to court documents, according to court documents, two officers tipped off, the, tipped off the department that Williams, who was in charge of the drug raid, kept the pricey shoes. Green's sister, who lives with him, said police officers who steal are no better than criminals. So, I mean, there's actually video of the entire thing. Yes. <coughs> 
There of the video raid? Of the raid? Not of the actual raid, but oh. the actual news report. Uh, okay, I was gonna say if they videoed the raid and then normally, that... normally they would video the raid just to um mm -hmm. to, to make sure procedure it. procedure yeah. yeah yeah there probably yeah. is video somewhere I don't think it'll there ever probably get out, is there at probably some is. point but they probably haven't put it out there yet but again you're willing to risk Yo. and put at jeopardy not only your pension thirteen years on the force and all this but other but then but then they they can also reopen old raid cases and exactly and convictions overturned on straight like training that. day got dude fucked up <laughs> <laughs> wow no, I, hope, I hope I hope I hope this is wrong I, I hope it's I, I I hope this D, is like completely D, come on, wrong come on D do you really you feel in your heart the part is wrong real. Come you on. know this shit ain't wrong. You know um, this shit man, ain't wrong. I, you know, it's just like, you don't, you're like really, you, you're really that, like, you, you had a brain fart the size of Mount Everest. Like <laughs> That's because he looks like Damian Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Padoma, what's, what's your take on this on this incident? Man, how to be Padoma Texas. Him. <laughs> what do you say, it had to be Texas? Yeah. Um, I look more like DMC. It looks like DMC. Wow. Yeah. So wrong. Oh, I wish we could do split screen. That looks look more like, like wow, DMX. <laughs> do it like DMX. <laughs> like like DMX. You know what's you know what's funny though, D. The thing is, is he didn't even think about it like this because he's clearly been doing this for a while. <laughs> so it, it's not like you know the average person would think, man, I'm not gonna put all everything, my my salary, my pen, everything like you said on the line. For a couple of pairs of sneakers, he's been doing this. He's so comfortable with it that he didn't even think about it. It was like, all right, let me get my shoes. You know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and get well, half. Let me skin half off that, the top. That, you know what I mean? Like he's so highlights. comfortable with this shit. Well, that's what highlights why a lot of people are afraid of law enforcement. Because no, he is he is in Texas, so their their mentality might be like a trophy or a memento of each raid or something. You never know. It's kind of real weird. But like yep. I said, also it's just like who's gonna the burden of evidence? Literally right. that phrase. Who's the burden be of evidence. For some sneakers, right? Or or even if I do get caught, who's gonna believe this drug dealer, crackhead, right. or whoever? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was just gonna ready to say. I was gonna say, you know, if a mugger robs somebody, you go to the cops. But if a drug dealer gets robbed, who does he go to? Right. <laughs> and yo, check he this out. Go, he goes to the Mexicans, the Haitians, or the Jamaicans. Right. Yo, check this out. The one thing that is believable is that he said he only had three thousand dollars. Why not go for the gusto and be like, I have fifty stacks in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't boost the number that big, did he? You know, he said I had three thousand dollars, and they only reported a thousand sixty. Yeah. So right. Yeah. That is somewhat like, oh, you know what? This guy may be telling the truth because <laughs> I got 50 stacks, man. You know, like, right. I've been hustling drugs my whole life and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 he took my brand new Jordans and I had 100,000. Oh, man. Matter of fact, the Jordans he took had 20,000 in cash in them. Right. Mm. It was sold. They had right. a big sold. That story yeah. would have been outlandish. Like, yeah, right. I was saving up to buy an island. <laughs> well, think about that. You don't think there's some kids that got collections or kids that are hustling like, yo, I'll keep my money in my shoes. It's not it's unfounded. It's in the sneaker it's box, true. bro. It's in the sneaker box. You didn't hear yeah. In the sneaker <laughs> box. You know, it's not in the shoes. Chris, that's a dope how I did tea, dude. Oh, word. Huh? This is from the, uh, from the uh, Harold Hunter day and shit, you know? Rest in peace, Harold Hunter. Harold Hunter. True um, indeed. So, but this is now the last thing I'm going to say about this. This is the third police officer. This is Texas? the third Fort Worth police officer to be fired or accused of a crime in recent weeks. So wow. something's going on. Nah, someone's it's, telling it's ain't nothing going on but the rent. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, ain't nothing snitching. going on but the rent. There's somebody uh, dying. Uh, snitching going Believe on. Believe me, he somebody won't be around snitching. long. That's it. A lot of snitching going on. Well, and, and yo, I don't know. Hold on a sec. Is it snitching when you tell the police? <laughs> no, if it's police on police. The way I was talking, snitching, snitching is snitching. snitching. Ain't no color snitching. Black snitching and white. Is snitching. Either snitching way, is snitching. I don't care who you like. Right? If you yeah. all playing by a certain, hold on, hold on. If you all playing by a certain 
rule and we all doing the same thing and then somebody goes against the grain, that is snitching. Now telling somebody who that, that you got robbed in your in your neighborhood, that's not snitching. People get here's that where, here's, they get that twisted. Here's where I difference. Here's where I don't think I got. Here's where I don't think it's snitching and it is more of a you got got. Internal affairs is the snitch for the cops. They always looking at each other, whether or not they get. And once they start catching one, it starts tumbling downhill. Yeah. So my thing is, it's it's less a problem of maybe somebody got snitched on, and more a problem of who ain't doing this bullshit. Yeah, that 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 is true. But I I, I like I always try to tell these young kids because they always. You know, if somebody ha- something happens to your, you know, cousin in the neighborhood, somebody robs or whatever. If you tell on that person, that is not snitching. The bottom line is, with dope boys, when, you, when y'all do this, y'all, y'all all sign up for the same for the same life. You know what it is. You know you don't go say nothing to to nobody about nothing that you're doing because it's all illegal. And then when you go squealing, that is going against the honor code or not not honor code because there is no honor code. That is snitching. Because now you're going against the rules. That's that's snitching. It's a big difference. You know what? That's honestly, man. That is a a, a great way to look at it. it, when, it when, that's, when that's we're trying to teach, we're trying to teach somebody is. the difference. You know what I mean? That's that's, that's really what yeah. it is. Because I get right. tired. I get tired of people in their own neighborhood not even trying to look out for their own neighborhood. Dude, right. somebody came in your neighborhood and stole from your front door. That is not snitch, brother. You got to take care of your neighborhood. You got to take care of home. You know what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with snitching. It's a totally different thing. It's a good way to look at it, bro. That's a time. 281. Stop snitching. <laughs> <laughs> Stop snitching on the cops. I got a whistle right now. Oh, man. All right. That's so, true. I got one more WTF. Okay. Uh-oh. A good one. Nobody um, even talked about that fila though. It just came and went though, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had to move on. Somebody got to send an email. Somebody got to send an email to Louis Cologne and talk to him about that. Yeah, we got to do. We got to do a little bet on that. <laughs> we we got to get. We got to get to this story right here. Now, oh. I'm gonna pull up in a second here. It's pretty crazy. Um, especially in light of what we just finished talking about. Um, 19-year-old gentleman whose name is Trayon Christian, 19 years old. Oh, man. Queens, is suing the NYPD and Barney's oh, because yeah, he was arrested for fraud after paying $350 for a Ferragamo belt and being told that he didn't really buy it, and they locked him up. What? Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey Jesse, remember remember that uh that uh Doc Martin segment we did? This, this is what I'm talking about. Hey I'm, Sean, I'm, can you post the link in the chat? I'm less That's afraid good. of that than I am afraid of this. So so because he bought a belt they thought he shouldn't be able to afford, they locked him up. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. Well, because of what though? Because of the accusation that he used a credit card. They thought he used a credit card that he stole. Yep. Who's credit card? What? Yeah. But that's my that's my point. Is it, that's my point. Is it goes back to the fact that simply on the premise that they thought he a, a young black male shouldn't be able to afford a three hundred fifty dollar belt. So here's where I'm going to read an excerpt from the article courtesy of New York Daily News. Fashion forward team lives with his mom in Corona, Queens, and studying engineering at New York City Technical College, where he had a work study job. His paycheck had just been deposited into his Chase bank account, so he went straight to Barney's on the afternoon of April 29th to buy the pricey Ferragamo belt with the silver buckle and reversible black and white strap. I knew exactly what I wanted, Christian said. He had seen the belt on a lot of his favorite celebrities, including rapper Joel Santana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He done failed, man. He said he browsed the ritzy rags. Daily News, leaving with their chunk about hyperbole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and other shit they put in their articles. They say he said he browsed the ritzy rags at Barney's before, but had never bought anything in the store. He said it was a quick trip. I gave them my debit card, signed my name. According to the lawsuit, the clerk said Christian. 
ask Christian to show his ID, which he did. Damn, he showed his ID and they still locked him up. So, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so it says now, it says here, we'll read a little more. It says, he got no more than a block from the store when two undercover NYPD detectives stopped him near East 60th Street and said that his card wasn't real. And he said that someone at Barney's called to report it. That's just exactly it. For, for, for the undercover to be there, I mean, somebody from the store had to go out their way and say, hey, go get this person who just got I'm this. Sorry. I'm like sorry. I'm sorry. The best part of this article is a spokeswoman for the NYP. Look, according to the lawsuit, he was detained and holding cell for about two hours. He was then released with his debit card, his belt, and his belt, and an apology from the police. <laughs> a spokeswoman for the NYPD denied Christian was detained for two hours, saying he was brought into the precinct at 7:04 and was out to leave at 7:45. Let me tell you something, man. There's nothing you can do at any time in your life and go to the precinct and walk out in 41 minutes. You are not <laughs> lying. <laughs> you are not lying. If that's you a need a, re if you need a report number, that's just going to take an hour and a half. See, you should be a detective, Vidal, because you, you're right. Like you, well, you, you said, said a lot you, of experience, you said, B. You said it all. <laughs> 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 but I'm saying, you, 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 so, you so this is out. this is the belt on screen that we're yeah. talking. Yeah. Oh yeah, my God. There, there, there's no way you can be booked and released in 41 minutes. I need to have oh. a discussion with this young man about, about three hundred and fifty dollars yeah. for exactly. a no, man. What is going it's on? It's a sign of the time. I think that's what I think that's why he was made to go through this before his for his poor choices and belts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not funny, but, but it is it's because for sure. no. But this is the thing. It is funny to me in a way because. That's that. I, that's fine. I hear you. Priorities need to be straightened out. But the young man ain't out thugging. He in college. He's you're in right, engineering right, college. You're right, you're he right. spent his hard-earned money to aspire, to, to aspire to something better. Yeah. Because this sure. ain't this ain't drugs. This dude went into the store and he spent his money on something he's aspiring to. He's never like, been arrested. His only crime was being a young black guy buying a three hundred dollar belt. Exactly. The said. And and the thing is, New it's York. not like. And it's not like he went to Mars to get it. He went to and a store. Kansas, where they don't see black people. He's in New York. Any, anybody, yeah. anybody could have bought yeah. the belt. He gonna be able to afford plenty of belts after he get this lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's gonna get a settlement, a little something, and they're gonna push him on his way. He ain't get no big money from nah, this. Nah, I would, I would not settle at all. Yeah. I'd be he like, got, you know what? Unless you're gonna, you gonna give me a couple hundred thousand. Me. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I hear you on that, but Mr. Christopher Vidal. Please repeat again how long this young man was locked up? It said 41 minutes. Doesn't equate to millions at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't say millions. I said 100,000. Uh, I, would, I, would I, I would call Vidal as a witness. I'd be like, tell him what you just told us. Right. There's no way that you can be booked and released in 41 minutes. Thank you, sir. Impossible. The perfect witness. You may step yeah. down. See you <laughs> later. You even if he get a couple of hundred thousand, the lawyer's probably gonna take forty percent. Yeah. Thirty. Well, if if, if his lawyer's gonna 30. take that much, his lawyer's gonna buck for more. Trust. He's gonna get. No, paid. the lawyer is gonna the lawyer is gonna buck for a shorter amount of time because he can go and pick up another case. Right. If the mm. Yep. We ain't grab that bread to keep it moving. Yep. Yeah. If each of them want to settle for fifty thousand dollars a piece, the lawyer gonna say, "Cool. All right. Let's do it." And his mother is a school bus driver. Word. Man. They taking that fifty, sixty grand. Yeah, and, and running. You're right. And then he could go by Versace, 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 Versace. <laughs> you know what? At least he didn't buy a Gucci belt with the G in the front. The I would have actually rather that, considering. Nah, that's what it's like. They would have let him go if he did that. They would have understood that. You gotta love this, though. It says, like, at the bottom of the article. Uh, Barney's the chain went bankrupt in 1996 and emerged from bankruptcy. Had no CEO between, so it's like all the bad press that it needs is awesome. Yeah, well, well, here's the other part, Chris, that I saw. I, we didn't get a chance to miss it. It said the NYPD has gotten 53 grand larceny complaints yeah. this year for credit card fraud at Barney's, Madison Avenue store. And 47 of them turned into arrests. 47 arrests. Arrest. But it's unclear exactly how many of those were actually minutes. charged. The that sounds like treason. an internal problem to me. 
Yeah, somebody. Well, yeah, arrest. That sounds like a big internal problem. Arrest yeah, somebody and somebody got to be at that register to take them credit cards. That's an internal problem. And yeah. sem- and, and with semantics, arrests and convictions are two different things. You can get yeah. arrested. Yeah, that number is just gonna keep going lower. They already said that many people, and then that many arrests it just keeps going lower. Yeah, convictions and arrests are different things. Yep, that's, in, that's internal games right there. So. Um, yeah, that's somebody at that one know, register to keep. You know, one, I, I just, I just don't understand how this is even like, how how this is even lawful. How a cop can can say, hey, you know what? There was no phone call from the bank saying the card was stolen. Your ID matched the card. Yep. Um, yeah, that's, that's what blew me away is the ID. You know, like, but like see, you, you didn't act like suspicious in any way. It didn't say that he was like in a rush to leave, or he was like, you know, putting on the belt and walking out, you know, like, it, it's, it's... That's it's, why I think they're going to get a little more out of this. Not you that know, I wonder if he like, really did... You know what, Chris? It's funny you say that. I wonder if he did do that. Put the belt on and walk out. Put the nah. belt on and pull his pants down. Nah. <laughs> I, nah I, I, I bet he had the... I bet the belt was still in, in the bag and he was just trying to... But this is like... <laughs> like like I said, and, and still. I, I, I think this is why they might get a little bit more out of it, is this was a, he was under suspicion of absolutely nothing. It'd be different if he was standing on the he block was looking a little bit shaky. He was being black. But it's that's what I'm saying. He was that's under suspicion up, though. of being black that's, in Barney's. He that's that's up. Period. He says, they I actually posted a picture of, of Jules Santana wearing said belt? Wow, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. In, at, at Amnesia in 2012. I think wow. it was in 2010. This, this uh, is the belt that he was he wanted he bought um, based on what he saw on Joel Santana. I don't even know if he saw it on Joel Santana. I wonder if the Daily News said that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I bet he at school hurting right now. Like, come on, why did I no, I did not get it from Jules, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> He's in college. He's lucky because if he was in high school, he'd really get clowned. Yeah, he'd be done for. He's in college. Done for. This might, get him, this might get him a chick though. Some chick may be like, damn, man. Let me handle this for you. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this thing got mad pussy over this. <laughs> he was on the cover of the newspaper. <laughs> he had his own money to buy the belt. He had his own loot, no doubt. You know? That's props. You bought that with your own. Mad female play. Hell you yeah. You bought that only? with your own. You know what, what's funny is that it's straight. That's, that's a woman like, yo, he got potential. Like, but she's Three hundred fifty dollar bills already. That's Three hundred fifty dollar bills. You know how many trips to Red Lobster that is. You know what I'm saying? And then he was yeah. buying a Ferragamo belt, not a Louis belt, not a Gucci <laughs> belt. You know, like he was on some next shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's, what, that's why he don't want the jewels thing to come yeah, out. How the belt looks like two cuffs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know what's exactly. funny? You know what's funny? They said Jewel Santana, but. That new Vanity Fair magazine with Jay in it, the shoes he's wearing in that magazine are all Ferragamo. So they ain't gonna put Jay's name in the news. No, they'll no, no, put no. a four-year-old Drew yeah, Santana's but... name in the news about. That's it. how you know, like like Chris said. That's how that's you know shit's all fucked up. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this they kid, he probably don't even know who Jules is. When's the last time you seen a Drew Santana picture or video? Long time. Not this kid. Yep. I mean, no, it's so no, bad that you can't say it. Jules Santana's been on TV a lot lately. It's so bad that you keep saying Jules when it's Jewels. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Boston, not New York. I say it wrong all day long. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's That's how been long it's been that, that you done said Jules like seven times and nobody corrected you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like, because yeah. we don't care. I was, I was about to say, because it's clearly not that important. We don't really. care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look like defending you out. <laughs> right. But, but he's been on TV a lot because of love and hip-hop. You he don't love it. Music in a while. No, shit, I wouldn't even know. I, I keep myself in the studio. You don't watch love and hip-hop. <laughs> no, these kids are watching everything. Trust me. He's watching Vanity Fair. These Ooh, kids God. are watching... They're watching Love and Hip Hop and Real Housewives. They're watching. Yeah, he all was that watching. Crap. He was watching Project Runway and shit. Ferragamo <laughs> 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 and shit. You know. There you go. Look at look at Joel's though. He's dressed terribly and shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> terribly. <laughs> 
Let me scroll back down for that. Oh, oh, god. Oh, oh my god, that's hilarious. You ever seen the interview with Joel's where he talks about liking women's belts more than men's belts? What? Where do you? I swear Who's that standing next to him? It looks like freaking. That's like Banks. 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 Right? Who got that Banks. Banks. Uh, Somebody they, got Chanel suspenders on? Who's yeah, that? Two chains yeah. before it was two chains? Yeah, that's Chanel probably two chains. Chanel suspenders. That's terrible. Mm. That's probably definitely not real. <laughs> <laughs> that's that definitely not real. That's that definitely not Oh my god. Carl hey, Lackerfeld was not wearing those. Hey, Chris. <laughs> hey, the fact that you, that you know about the true and shit, that's funny. True. <laughs> Chris, I'm gonna be fresh as hell with the feds watch. <laughs> oh, yo, for real, that is. They they said that is from the Two Chains album release. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Y'all know who it was based off of the accessories. That's how. Is that Santana? Cause it don't look like him. No, that's him. Hmm. Yeah, this dude, this dude said dude. he knew who it was based on the accessories. No, y'all knew who it was based <laughs> on the accessories. <laughs> Not even the music. Dude, Chris, we got to change it. Chris came up with another good title for the show. <laughs> Episode, <laughs> uh, Lagerfeld wouldn't wear that. Lagerfeld <laughs> wouldn't wear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Mm -hmm. That's tough. All right, so it is 11.49 Eastern Standard Time. And um, we have ran through a bevy Nice whole host of topics. Paper, can I give you one more? You got one? I got one more. WTF. Do oh, it. Let's go. Let's Do go. It. This is it's, the last it's one. Only, it's only getting better. Do okay. it. All right, hold up. Here we go. This Brother, one. Be careful. This one uh, is a late to the dance. It popped up. I saw it. I scratched my head. I said, really? This is what... Um, this is how cats want to get down now. Okay, we got a couple so. of events to talk about too, so we can't. We do. End it. We do. Got a couple of events, and we got one more topic. Yo, oh, the Penny oh. Air Force One. This oh. is the Nike oh. Air Force One Comfort Penny Ooh. Hardaway. Chris oh. Brown loves that shoe. <laughs> like the silence is golden. It looks like a child shoe. That's good it looks like a toddler shoe. Like it's supposed to have wheels on the back. Mm. <laughs> mm. Hey, Nike, Nike is shitting on all their consumers, man. I mean, with that Weatherman thermal map phone posit, the, mm -hmm. the Air Force One, the Glove mm. Air Force One, this Penny Bullshit Air Force One. It ain't hey. shitting on them if they asking for it. I say, I say, uh, I, I say who's, that who's uh, asking for this? the reality who's of, who's of this shoe is that we shouldn't even talk about it. Ugly ass Air Force One. I bet I guess ain't nobody going to Nike saying ugly ass Air Force One. I bet they sell these. Nope. You don't think so? Nope. No. Nah. 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 Nope. Not you'll, be able, you'll be able to get these for about three less for about. No, they sell so for eight dollars. I don't, care. I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't care what look at that. Fellas, fellas, this, looks like, this looks fellas. like the Nikes on those famous footwear commercials. Fellas, I ain't said that, <laughs> that people would buy them for full price. I said they will sell these. Argue yes. with me. I didn't no. say they were buying for full price. No, they'll, 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 they'll sell, they'll sell from Nordstrom Rack and Cut Rate everywhere else. They will. Yeah. Not for retail. No, 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 not for retail, but who cares? It, 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 yeah, okay, I get it. Nike shitting on their customers, but not if they still sell. Who gives a shit at the price point? It's still going to be a profit. No, exactly. See, the problem no, is because that, no, you're, looking problem at it, you're looking at it the wrong way. You're looking at it towards the tail end. Looking at this shoe, I can guarantee you this shoe is probably going to be a conditional buy where yeah, they have to buy this shit in order to get Something in order else. to get phone exactly. buys. So if you I believe that. Store, Yep. Not because the body said, yo, that's hot. I got customers that are going to want that. They bought it because Nike said, if you don't buy this shit, you ain't getting the shit that's actually going to sell. Is, yeah, that's this why is, I hear you. I'm not arguing that point. I'm not mm -hmm. arguing that point. This that's is the snub nose in the back. That's a, that's a great point. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not arguing that point at all. You guys are putting words in my mouth. You said <laughs> yourself that this was <laughs> sale at Nordstrom's rack on clear out, and it, yeah, it will. It will. Be That's there. all I'm saying. That's all It'll I'm saying. I'm not putting. I'm not putting any other conditions on it, brothers. I get y'all. I hear y'all. What did you say, Ben? 
You see, you copping for 40? 40. And you clown me for copping the other one at one? (laughs) (laughs) Ben would cop these before he bought my threes. Let's let's be clear, though. If you put anything at the right price point, they're going to sell it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying. I don't give a damn. I don't care if it's shit or shit. Somebody will buy that shit. I'm not saying it's brilliant, fellas. I'm not saying it's brilliant. What y'all like better? These are the Gary Payne's. I'll fight you. The Gary Payne Air Force are these? Yup. With the glove? They both look yeah. like incest in Arkansas. I'm wearing dollar I'm wearing dollar old navy flip flops before I wear any of those. Hey, I bet you dollar old navy flip flops to sell. No, nah, you're not you're not oh, Quab, you're not gonna be able to get a pair of dollar old navy flip flops because the minute that sale drops, the fat girl mafia will be holding it down. Y'all playing the game all wrong. You got to stake out Lane Bryant first, cuddle up next to Big Girl. Wow. Oh, oh my God. Put a disclaimer. You're talking shit. You're going to end up seeing a phone posit wedge soon. Not a joke. Not a joke. Okay, here's a question. Here's a question. Here's a question, uh, uh, people. Is there, would there ever be a foam posit football cleat. Yep. Yeah. I can see, yeah, I can see. I can see him doing anything. Foam posit cleat? A foam posit cleat. Yeah, man. That, that don't wow. have no. No. I don't think no. they do that though. Really? No. Really? Why would they not? <laughs> that's that I'm I'm gonna come at it from a different angle. I'm gonna come at it from a different angle. Why would they not? Hmm. Cleat of footwear goes through a different process, y'all. I'm waiting yes, for the foam posit. I'm sure, I'm sure it does. But, but if they can make a foam posit boot, throw an yes. ACG sole on it, uh-huh. why uh-huh. can't they take a foam posit sneaker and if put they a cleat make a jo- bottom on it? If they can make a it. Jordan cleat anything. Yeah, but that's just that's, just that's that's a, that's a more flexible upper to play around with. Yeah, next I'll, up is the foam posit golf SB. <laughs> <laughs> and why? And, a, and again, why would they not? <laughs> Shout out to the homie Big Cat. We got to get to his 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 um Absolutely. story. In a minute. All right, so that was the last WTF that I wanted to share. Mm, um, those look like wheelies. Ooh. They do look like wheelies, though. <laughs> <laughs> we have an event we got to talk about. Two events actually. Um, one of which I have the flyer for. Um, let me ah. I think I need to announce this one. I'm not going to be able to screen share this one at the minute. But <clears throat> tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow, right? 1024. Yep, 1024, yep. 1024. 9 PM. Shout out to Major in DC. They're DC having a Timberland yeah. celebration. That's one of the best. Why you do a celebration for 40 years of Timberland and the release of the World Hiker Boot, Chris Vidal's least favorite Timberland boot? Not true, um, though. What do you say? I love that fucking boot. Bro. <laughs> I still have the original sand colorway one. So tomorrow, from 9 p.m. to midnight at Major, they will have a celebration, 40-year celebration for the boot. The boots will be available at midnight, 1025, at Major. Complimentary food and drinks on hand and music by DJ Clark Kent. So Ooh, that's tomorrow. Go there and drink and eat and leave before they can buy the boot. <laughs> wow. All of you in the DMV area, shout out to Big Cat. He's always looking out for us. What's the name? Yeah. Had it on in his Instagram the other day, didn't he? The World Hiker. That's What's a that? good boot, man. That shit is dope. Yeah, Clark. I think Clark had him on. The Clark other had it on his Instagram the other night yeah. when he was at the game. Yeah, yeah, New York when he went to the Giants game. So. That's tomorrow night, Thursday, 1024, 2013, 9 p.m. to midnight. Again, the boots will be available at midnight, 1025. And music by DJ Clark Kent, complimentary food and drinks, DMV area folks who have love for Timberland. So they're not exclusive to Major. They're just doing a launch party at Major. Correct. Um, From what I understand, yes. Um, No insole, hit, nothing, just... They're carrying the shoe and throwing a party. That's what it looks like here, based on what I see on the fly. 
Um, it, it's part of the the 40 year anniversary. I think they had they I don't they had a party in New York, but I don't know if it was associated with the World Hype, but it's all focused around the uh, the 40th anniversary. Yeah, the New York one they lasered uh they lasered the Timbs. So I always like major though. If you go to the website, it lists every New York store that's going to have them. It's got, oh, yeah. It lists every store that's going to have them. Going to have them, period? Okay. What yeah. website? Hmm. If you just go to Timberland.com and you look oh, up okay. Hiker, it has every store that they're going to release at. So New York is going to be, uh, let's see, it's going to be at BX Sports, Atrium, <laughs> Sneaker Hub, City Jeans, David Z, Foot Locker. No one should, no one should buy anything at Atrium. <laughs> they they sell so 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 drop crotch pants at <laughs> Damn. He's okay. going in. Stop him. <laughs> well, based on based on this party and what you guys are saying now, it looks like they're gonna stick to this list as being where you can find them, which would be interesting because that means you have to go to one of these stores. There's only three places in Canada, and there's only like there's only. One on the west coast. They're not wearing Timberlands in Canada, man. It'd be too cold in Canada. <laughs> the reality of it. Foot Locker House of Hoop. Community and off the hook in Canada. Montreal, Toronto, and Toronto. Your sister, mm. Brooklyn Hangar. All right. So, oh. next event. This Saturday, October 26th. Shout out to Jay Corbin and the good folks over at Sneaker Beast. But Jay is cool. Uh, Sneaker Beast is back. Saturday, 12 to 6, in Brooklyn, at the Brooklyn Hangar. Battle, buy, sell, and trade kicks, as well as partnership with the Smack Ultimate Rap League. And there will be a Soul Survivor sneaker battle. It's all going down Saturday, 12 p.m. 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., Brooklyn Hangar, which the address is 140 53rd Street, Brooklyn, New York. You can get tickets at sneakerbeastredtapetour.eventbrite.com or you can just go to <laughs> sneakerbeast.com, buy your tickets through that website there. Your host for the event will be myself along with Air Karina from Female Sneaker Fiends. So hope to see you guys there on Saturday for Sneaker Beast. Soul Survivor Battle and Smack URL Ultimate Rap League going down. 12 to 6. See y'all. Sean, Sean, I heard you were going to be in a rap battle. I am. I'm nice with mine. I know. <laughs> Bring really? some freestyle real quick. Give me some bars, son. Oh, 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 oh. Turn my headphones up, D. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn my headphones up. You turn. Okay, here we go. Beat. Here we go. He's turn already done. Up. He's already done half his bars with the. I can't uh, hear you. Turn oh. my headphones up. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Turn my headphones up. <laughs> Why want these bars? Hey, <laughs> granola bars. Bars, man. Granola oh, bars. Granola bars. All right. So that's Saturday, ten twenty six. Shout out to Sneaker Beast, Jay Corbin, all the folks over, Willie Esco, all the folks over at Sneaker Beast. What's good, y'all? Shout out to Karina, too. Female sneaker fiends, stand up. So, our homie Big Cat from the DMV area, who's a big supporter of the show, also the gave us of motor vehicles? What's that? The Department of Motor Vehicles? <laughs> wow. Is, is your car off the road or something? That's what you think when you hear DMV? DMV, exactly. <laughs> wow. Um... He asked this question in regards to the KD6. He wanted to know what we, the panel of esteemed soul doctors, thought of Nike's use of Kevin Durant in telling the stories related to the KD6 colorways this time out. Better. They're, they're spreading it too thin. I mean, they, they know how popular KD is, so I, I feel that they're just reaching for whatever story they can get from KD's life. I mean, he could have went to them and said, damn, I feel like eating peanut butter and jelly today. Let's make that a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter and jelly KD6. The nigga like peanut butter and jelly, let's make it a shoot. And that that's what I feel like they're doing. They're reaching. It's, it's not 
It's not compelling stories anymore. They just pull shit out of their ass. It's a classic Nike fucking fuck up. Sorry. That's all that came to mind. It's classic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic Nike thinking, oh, let's get on this bandwagon as fast as we can. And they've got all these designers and product line people who have no idea how to mold and direct the shoe. And so they're just putting out everything and not everything needs to be out. It's shit. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I really don't have an opinion on it. Just the thought that it there also goes... There's a peanut butter and jelly one, though. Yes. Yeah, there, I, I think it goes... In, I think it goes right in line with the culture of stupid ass names and colorways of shoes. You know, that's that's their way of attaching some really quick faux story to it to give it what we always talk about in actuality, like uh, you know, background story, some pedigree to it. Um, okay, so then we'll we'll call it this colorway, or we'll call, we'll attach it to this quick story. So, I think Jesse's right, um, but I think it also goes in a trend on the consumer side too of their reading our trend of constantly naming a shoe something. Like, it can't just be that shoe. It's got to be the quote-unquote something else. Well, I think I think that I think I, 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 I appreciate them trying to go in with the stories. I think, like I think uh, Quab said, I think it's just too many. I think they're coming out way too many colorways, way too fast, and they're trying to hit us in the head with stories for each one, whereas, you know, if they just slow-played it, the season haven't even, hasn't even started. You know what I mean? Like, slow play this thing. Like, you're doing too much. It's like almost 12. By the end, of, I think by the end of December, it's going to be 12 to 15 colorways out already. Yeah, but you know, you know it don't work like that. They gave him a check, and they need to get the money back. No, I understand that, but, that's, but, that's, but, but I guess what I'm saying is we're, we're being a, a bit hypocritical because we're always asking them, Tell a story, tell a story. Now they're telling stories. It's just that they're hitting us in the head they're with too they're many, they're too many lame ass stories, and not, yeah, not, not not putting not putting some detail into one, two, three, maybe four at the most. I think they're, just, what, they're doing I too much. That's what Quab said. But I think you're right. Is they're not lame ass stories. They're not even stories at all. That'd be like me saying, "Hey, yo, Heat." So uh, tell me about that one time, and you go, yeah, that one time. Ooh, story. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't saying shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut butter jelly. Like, this is like Tourette syndrome. You ain't stories. They oh, weren't man. prepared. They weren't prepared for KD to do better than Kobe and LeBron. They got all kinds of shit in the pipeline for Kobe and for LeBron. They didn't expect KD to have the summer he had. KD outsold both of those shoes. So yes, now they're like, well, let's try to get on that. And that's why they're flooding the market with this bullshit because I don't, they don't I, have I, anything that may, else. That may be a small percentage of it, but I think the bigger percentage of it is if you look at their roster, with KD, Kobe, and LeBron, you have three of the biggest, most liked, popular players in the NBA. If they were to release those shoes, those marquee player shoes, all at the same time, they'd be slitting their own throat. We yep. saw it before how early they were releasing the KD models. They released yep. those way before, like right at the beginning of summer, I believe it was. So then they can make room for the LeBron. <laughs> then they can make room for the Kobe. They're doing it all in succession to clear out and have a bigger sell through with KD. Then move on to LeBron. So they start off with their cheap shit, KD, $125 or whatever the retail is on that. Boom, they, they bought 80% of that shit. Okay, cool, let's move on to LeBron. $200 price point. Boom, we giving them LeBron, hit them with the hype, all kind of crazy colorways, South Beach colorway, whatever the hell they're going to do. Boom, that's done. Move on to Kobe. Kobe's coming back from the Achilles tear. He's bionic man. He's dropping 81 points, whatever the fuck they're going to do. And then, boom, his shoe is flying it on top of that. They, if they were release all that shit at the same time, they're cutting their own throat. Well, you're right because they, they, they've they done it in the past. You're right, they've done it in the past. So. Well, LeBron, John, LeBron, you catch that? Won. LeBron won, so that justifies their their price increase on the shoe, right? Oh yeah, I mean, that, rank, people right? are gonna pay whatever for LeBrons. It doesn't matter as long as it's a decent colorway. They're gonna pay whatever for LeBrons. And even if it's not a decent colorway, it'll be on sale, and other people will buy it. Oh yeah, I mean the sale price. I mean if people are going to pay full retail, it's going to have to be a decent uh, colorway. It's like a two hundred and twenty-five dollars shoe now. Right? Yeah, I'm just now getting a pair of LeBron tens because they're on sale. 
Yeah, it's two hundred now. But I mean, you know, how, much, how much of these stories actually matter? I mean, here's a question for me: How much of these stories actually really matter in terms of what went into the product creation? I think that's the part that's missing from Katie's shoes. You might want to ask. You might want to yeah, ask. I want to know. I want to know. Shoes. I want to know about the little Chinese kid that works at the factory and shit. What sneakers he wears to go to work? <laughs> I want to know. Hey, kids, you know what he wearing? Dollar old navy flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing warrior oh, footwear. You know that? That's right. That's right. And what more fees? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, and that's the truth. <laughs> I want to know that. I mean, I wanna, I mean you think about it. Let's, let's look at the contrast between the KD6 and LeBron 11. We, went, we covered what the LeBron 11 design inspiration was. And for those of us who are into that, all right, you might be able to fuck with that shoe. Regardless of the price point, you may be able to approach the shoe and be like, all right, I think I'll fuck with that shoe. But the KD6 was going to be a KD6, regardless of whether there was a Texas colorway, a blue crab colorway, or a peanut butter and jelly colorway. What is it about the KD6 that we're supposed to connect to on that level as a story? And that's where the shit seems like total the bullshit. The that Katie's, Katie's a is like the worst shoe I've ever seen in my life. That shit looked like, that shit looked like Team Jordan. Say it again. That LeBron 11 is one of the worst shoes I've seen ever. I'm looking at men's LeBron's James shoes on Nike.com right now. Mm-hmm. $200, 250 or whatever this is. These look like, remember when they were making those like uh, Jordan 45s or some shit? <laughs> what were they? Remember those shits? This shit is terrible. Terrible. You, you, got, sorry, you, you know, I'm, I'm not really the basketball dude. This yeah. new layer of lunar lawn cushioning is getting leaner without losing. This shit is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is really bad. Like it got like diamond cuts or some shit on it. Armor posit. Armor posit, Chris. Armor Even Nike posit. abandoned the name Armor posit. It's Armor po- I crazy. kind of abandoned Nike though. That's kind of like you know. <laughs> <laughs> once you the whole know, like uh, once what were these the countdown packs and shit? They ruined everything, man. But but I mean let's let's think about this. If your shoe already just as a basic shoe doesn't have a connection point to the consumer, how well are these other stories really going to work? Well, yeah, they working. I mean, the, I think Nike is sort of like on, shit. I think Nike's banking on it twofold: one in the appeal of the actual player, and two on the story. So if the player, let's say KD. His story is very intriguing to a lot of people, where he hasn't won that championship yet, he bleeds his heart out on the court, he has a shot like water, and that transitions into the shoe. So if they come out with peanut butter and jelly, they say, oh, man, I love KD, and he loves peanut butter and jelly. Me, too. I want to buy the shoe. That's so a it's good too point. far. You're probably right. That same kid, that same kid jelly. probably the day before was like, I ain't even no fucking peanut butter jelly. You stupid. The peanut butter and jelly and all these, the ticket ones and stuff like that. If you're talking about the holidays, realize that that's a story that you can sell your mother. Mom, I want these because he's got this I peanut butter and jelly story. Say, yeah. Oh, hey, that's mom, cute. Dude. So you're I don't think that's the way that's supposed to work in these times. It's yes. not, but it does. Yes. Yes. We slap the shit out of us and we said we want a shoe inspired by peanut butter and jelly for $130. If you would slap me with a peanut butter mom and jelly. With <laughs> an endless pocketbook, a bottomless pocketbook, some kind of reason or something she can use to go get this shoe without you knowing. Listen, that's what listen. It is. let me, let me say this. As somebody, as somebody who, who is still part-time in the retail and I sell to a lot of kids and parents, the shit works. We might Thank not you. like it, but Thank this you. shit works because the bottom line is peanut butter they come and jelly in there, works. They, listen, yeah. listen, listen, listen. What I'm saying, Pete. I work. Y'all know I still do my thing on the side for the whatever. Hey, so, sell, sell us some peanut butter and jelly. Right listen, now. all, all I'm gonna tell, tell you something. is I don't even have to sell it. It's just like Jordans now. When they walk in, uh, uh, you got the candy, Katie. You got the uh, the peanut butter and jelly, Katie. You got the. Uh, the, uh, the weatherman, Katie. I'm like, what the fuck is? Wh- this wait a is minute. How these kids are relating. That's how they relate to the shoes, and the so shit they can works, tell their parents. The shit Mom, works. Mom, put a locker and get me peanut butter and jelly, Katie. You know, you know, no, you know. You, listen, listen, only, listen, y'all. Listen, no listen, listen. Like y'all know, the, y'all know the KD that's not selling. The only one that doesn't sell is the one that doesn't really have a name, and that's the first one. 
The team ones. That no, the, the yellow joint. The, yeah. that's, that's the one that did that doesn't they call it the seat pleasant, I think. I can't, I but can't. that's the one that's the one that really doesn't have something that the kids can relate to because that's where he's from. All but the rest of these shits, the candy, the uh, the weatherman, which is the meteorologist, because they can't say what meteorology, so they say weatherman. Uh, uh, the peanut butter and jelly, all this shit is selling. The NY66, they all selling. They all selling. Everybody on this call has said bread fours, cookies and cream fours. Nope. Uh, not me. Uh, nope. Who nope. Nope. Come on, nope. man. Nope. Nope. Come on, man. Nope. 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 You never this, talked about bread and lettuce. This is the wrong, nope. is the wrong show for that. Nope. This is the wrong show nope. for that. Nope. <laughs> I don't even know what they're talking about half the time. I gotta do internet research to know what that shit well, is. Somebody, I heard somebody call it a cookies and cream four, and I was like, "What the? Fuck? Yeah, the yeah. Oreos, the yeah, Oreo. You know what fixes. How come they're not just cement? When I watched Do the Right Thing, they were cement. Cause them shits is broke. Everyone had nicknames. It was nicknames all the time. Now they yeah, but the nickname nicknames. wasn't bread. Now the, they're using the, those nicknames. The bottom line is that shit. That nicknames. shit works for the kids, and they're selling out everywhere. Well, but okay, again, so the devil's question what is, is Jesse that. brought up this point because KD is outselling Kobe badly, and he did have a better summer than LeBron based on what we see on where LeBrons are in the price. Even the kids' LeBrons did miserable this past summer. Yep. Um, yeah, mom, mom's not buying their LeBrons. Um, how far can you take this? Because if you remember when we talked about the release of the LeBron 7, there were 47 different colorways of the LeBron 7. <laughs> yeah, 47. That's crazy. How far do you go with KD's shoe? And as how many of these stories are actually going to How far is, before you as run dry? Far, as it's, far as you, you can go, see. You go until you choke the life out of them. They're right. a million, multi-billion dollar brand. They, they yeah. have no sort of loss. Yeah. You, you choke, you, know? you literally bleed you know and dry. You know what's funny, people. though? You know what's funny, y'all? Even some of the stuff... Even the the stuff that they're feeding people, they it, it has a mind of its own. Once you have a fir the first couple of colorways, once it starts working, uh, I think they call it the Texas KD. Yeah. Guess what? I had kids coming to me asking for, oh, uh, y'all got the uh, the Halloween KD? Uh, yeah, Halloween. I'm, you, I'm like Halloween KD. <laughs> but then I looked at it and I'm saying, you know what? I can see that. You know what I mean? I can, if you look, like at shoe, if you look at the shoe, you can see it's that. It's the nickname. But That's you know what? what it's, it's, the it's, the, it's, the, it's the evolution. It's the it's the evolution of 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 what we're doing, y'all. This is this is what works with the kids now. But no, they don't like it. it. I get they don't it, like it, but it works. I, I get it. I, I completely understand it. Never argument on that. The question is, he's not as storied a player as either LeBron or Kobe. How far can you take this until you kill it? I'm, I'm as, as long as he's scoring, as long as he's scoring a lot you of points. You already have a sports title. Playoffs. You have a weatherman. You have a Texas. You have a peanut butter and belt jelly. You have a Montrose Christian. I mean, you know, I'm thinking in my head, Kobe, based on I stories, mean, uh, uh, KD is selling because he's approachable. And his price point, even though it's his going price up. Point was yeah, the that's, that's thing in terms too. of overall sales of those three guys, KD is approachable. When yeah, Nike okay. says, KD, do you want to come to an event? He says yes and gets on the plane. When kids go up to uh, KD, he said, hey, a couple more kids want to get some more interviews. Cool. I'll hang out. He is approachable. The other two are not. But but that's, that's all good. But, 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 the, but listen to what he just said about the KD. The one that doesn't have a story doesn't sell. Right, right because he's not it in season market. yet. The it one without marketed. a story... The only way you get a KD to sell out of story is he has to wear it. So watch when he starts playing. You will see a whole new set of colorways that are dumbed down, but they will sell because, like, oh, that's the one he wore the other night. He's right. been wearing he's not in front of the public. You have to give them a story. Well, let me, give them a story during the summer. They bought it. Now he's going to be on court, and they'll bring up something else. But it has sold because he did wear it initially. Right. It just, you know what I'm saying? It just took people a little bit. And, 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 and make no mistake, y'all. In about a month or two, it's it's gonna sell out. It's just taking a little longer for that one mm -hmm. in particular because that yellow is is really to bright. Me that, to me, that colorway. If, if parents can't can't really, hey, that colorway is fresh. Big -ass yellow, right? I can't get this kid a big ass yellow shoe to wear to school. Other than that, I mean, the rest of them are selling. And, and like I said, give it about a month or two, that shoe will sell out too. Yeah, let me find out how to take that swoosh off the toe. I buy some. I mean, one <laughs> one thing one thing is certain. And, <laughs> that thing and is huge. This is, this is most definitely certain. He definitely defies the logic that big men can't sell shoes. 
Yeah. You know well, what though? But he's not that's really that's technically a big man though. He's more of a guard. Six feet ten. No, 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 yeah, no, but he's no, still no. more of a guard, y'all. He's yeah, still look, look. He's spent most of his time on the perimeter. Not it, buying it, that. It doesn't. It doesn't do with what he really is. I think it does. I think it does. Let's talk to Ben. Because on, it's, a ball player, it's a ball player term. When you're a big man, that means you're under the hoop not being flashy. Right. I don't think it has anything to do with how tall you are because Penny was that tall. Right. No, he wasn't that tall. Penny wasn't that tall. The, I feel I mean, what you're maybe saying. Not, maybe not that tall. You know what I'm saying. At right. the time, Penny, Penny was six foot what playing guard. Six, six seven, but at the same, the th- the bottom line is he's not playing under the basket. Exactly. He, he shoots threes. His shoe. Let's let's look at his shoe. Every shoe he's came out with. That he shoe. Ain't the, he a, ain't big, a big man can't be caught dead playing in that shoe. He ain't the drummer of the he band. Play, they he can't play in that shoe. Songs, baby. <laughs> he ain't six feet ten. He's he still a big man, regardless no, of what his game is. No, I don't he, care. I, don't, I can't go with him. He's not a big man. Ben, you the, you you said you're the ball player here. This is your this is your area. As a as a ball player, he's a big man. That's really interesting. I can't uh, especially you. when I was on yeah. campus, but KD shoe, you see KD shoe on women more than you do men. Is he a, is is Ben? Would you say he's a big man by ball terms? By ball, well, I mean, I don't care what anybody says. He's seven feet tall. The stats always say six ten, but he's seven feet. Like, okay, but would you call him like like I said, as a baller? Does he, he have play? a big man? Game. What he's playing though, like if does he, he have a big man game? No, it's definitely like, not. Can't not go by that. They, definitely not. They, can't go they, by that. Why they, not? That's they, what is Dirk Nowitzki? Dirk Nowitzki is six ten. What is Dirk Nowitzki? They don't call him a big. He, but they don't call he, Dirk he's Dirk down low more than, and it, 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 he doesn't sell no. shows. So no, Dirk Nowitzki and Kevin Durant have similar games. But they still don't call Dirk a big. I've never heard anybody yeah, ever call Dirk a big. It's P ten. I don't care. You don't call, you don't call Dirk a big. Exactly. They're not, they're not. They're not traditional big. Let's say traditional. No, traditional big, they're not traditional big, big. Big might as well be your number in the basketball lexicon. Are you a a four or a five? And if you are not a four or a five, you are not called a big. I if see. You're right. a one, two, three. You are not a big. Period. I get. I get that. If you he's stature, he's a big man. No. And big men no. do not sell shoes. No. <laughs> no. His position. What did you say earlier? Semantic. No. <laughs> his, no, this ain't semantics. His position is early. No. That's semantics. No, no, no. This is semantics. You know what I'm gonna say? You know what I'm gonna say? Okay, I'm gonna say KD's a big man. If you say big man don't sell shoes, as a you mean big man as in the number like gone as in the four, the five. They don't sell shoes. You can exactly. be tall as fuck and sell shoes. Thank you. But good point. Good point, youngster. See, you but he's to. not a. Uh, listen, listen. We're saying the same thing. We're just saying. We're what just about saying He's no, not I a just, traditional just, big. A traditional big is a four and a five, just like exactly. uh, so Ridiculous just said. And that's that's just what shoes. it is. They don't sell shoes. Traditionally, fours and fives don't sell shoes. Right. And that's what we talk but about when we say the big. Yeah, thank you. Except on Lonzo Morning, because those mornings are coming back. Oh, they, he didn't sell them then, and he won't sell them now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't even buy those. Exactly. He didn't, he didn't sell them then, and he won't sell them now. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, like I said, under the hoop, you might as well be sitting on the on the drum set in back of the band. When you under the hoop, <laughs> what that say, Chris? How light skinned niggas act when something's too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I I am offended just because I have a of melanin does not mean I act that way. I'm All offended. Right. Oh, it is God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See what you started, Big Cat? Don't feel bad. Were you listening? My last question is, were you listening to Quab when he was talking? What's that? Were you listening to Quab when he was talking? Absolutely. He's EF Hunt. Were you, li- were you listening to Quab when he said the next Kobe shoe coming this Christmas? It's going to be oh, one no, they, they weren't paying attention to me. They weren't paying oh, no, attention to me. I heard, I was I heard like, it. You heard me. I was like, yo, everybody knows about that. Holy shit. Like, <laughs> I heard it. All right. You know how many it's, versions of that shit? He's a Q. He's better have fly wire, too. Word. <laughs> he's going to have a few. Oh, my God. I can't even think because of a doubt, man. <laughs> it's not fly wire. He's going to have more than one. Oh, my God. It's gonna be fly knit, he said. Yeah. I'm still yeah, stuck in the. I'm down. I'm still stuck in the chat, bro. When you said, "Who don't love the fuck, don't love the crap." <laughs> Who don't love? 
Who gonna love oh Blueprint? Oh my god! <laughs> All right, man, it's twelve twenty-two Eastern Standard Time. Once again, shout out to Big Cat. Thanks, dude. You gave us a little more to go out with a bang on the show with. Oh um, man. Episode number two hundred eighty. The proposition is in the books. D Wells, why do you call this show the proposition? Just to break it down for the listeners and the viewers. <clears throat> because people get proposed to. People make propositions on trades. People make propositions to uh, for a come up. So I just thought it was appropriate, especially knowing that our WTF, you know, police officer in Fort Worth <laughs> was propositioned and he couldn't proposition his ass out of that stupid shit. So that shit was calling him, son. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he got gotta have them Jordans, son. Gotta have those Jordans. Okay, hey, hey, Lagerfeld wouldn't wear that. <laughs> you know, thing, I mean, if you think yeah, about it, the cop, the cop was like, yo, this kid don't deserve these Jordans. And the other kid, the other kid went to Barney's and was like, this kid can't afford this belt. See? And shit. Like, what's going on here? I really don't understand with the, you know, the don't deserve shit, you know? Blame it on Lagerfeld. It's called the proposition. Blame it on Lagerfeld. You oh, know? No. Oh, man. So, so we'll be back next week. Chanel suspenders. <laughs> Joel's looking like he work at D'Agostino's and shit. <laughs> it's terrible, man. It's terrible. Oh, oh, God, this what I'm telling you is blue crab sneakers, Texas <laughs> Halloween sneakers and shit. <laughs> this shit is killing me, man. I'm not saying we're making the best shoes in the game, but this shit is killing me, man. <laughs> not, I don't even miss wearing those shits anymore, yo. <laughs> Oh my God! It's really like, oh. like damn. Let him go. Let him go. Let him keep going. Who the fuck don't love blue crabs? <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my God. I don't understand. No, yeah, yo, he likes blue crabs, and it's his favorite food. And it's, it's actually still his favorite food to this day. What the fuck is that? <laughs> that guy, Leo, whatever his name is, the fucking, what's his name right here? The director of design? Somebody should slap him. <laughs> oh, my God. Just slap him. Be like, yo, what are you, stupid? Did you even, like, proofread that shit, you idiot? What am I, fucking five uh, years old and shit? You're selling me $300 fucking <laughs> and you're telling me, oh, yeah, his favorite food is blue crab. And it, But in the first one, it was fucking peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter and jelly is crab. What kind of shit is that? Step on one and boom! A perfectly rational black man can explode. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Ooh, D. Wells. Ooh. Oh, man. Episode 280 is in the books. <laughs> it's been fun. We thank you for walking with us. Especially a, a, a deep star-studded salute, Brooklyn hat tip, to the one and only Mr. Vidal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So make sure you tell your people to come back and rock with us, walk with us, talk with us next week as we give you a new episode. Until then, uh, please don't get caught in a raid. Please don't go to Macy's and buy a belt that... Cost more than your Barney's. outfit. Barney's. Macy's yeah, Barney's. Go, no, so you got at Barney's, so don't go to yeah. Macy's. That's Macy's yeah. employs mad black people. You can oh. still go to Macy's and shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back next week. Y'all be good. Y'all be fun. And on that note, as we say, we're up and out of this piece. Walk good. Yeah, it's a play, it's a play, too. FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs>